ugly, you are disgusting. Greetings and well met. I am the Crown DM. Welcome to episode 9 of Cometh the Fall. The Iron Duke. Hello to everybody. Hello Invoker, Apple, Zebus, Edtastic, Indigo League, Clown, Prostar. I hope everybody is having a fantastic evening. I certainly am. I took a nap before D&D, so I am refreshed. I am relaxed. I managed to go buy some energy drinks today, so I am feeling very good. On top of that, uh, the plans for the year have uh, continued to work out. So we are moving along just fine. What we're currently doing is allowing our other players to get themselves situated. I believe one of our players is in a game and finishing it up. Uh, and the rest are getting themselves uh, set up as well, adjusting notes, getting their, uh, getting themselves ready for the game, as well as uh, we had, well, can't really blame me. Uh, the server hosting Discord Reactive Images was down today, so we're going to see what happens <laughs> when I pan over to the characters, and we're going to see what that looks like, and hopefully it's not a bunch of errors and it's their actual images. That is sadly the one thing I cannot fix. Everything else, however, can be adjusted.
community discord is coming along uh given the recent state of things i myself have not been uh wholly there uh more or less occupied with both real life and uh this you know this whole thing as such as streaming however i can assure you uh it'll be released soon tm Indeed. Please look forward to it. <laughs> episode 9 is panning out to be a very interesting episode. At least from a, uh, a DM's perspective. With all of the choices that the players have made thus far, uh, I am very much looking forward to how they intend uh, to enact their plan. It's going to be very exciting. We now have the adjusted overlay for everybody who is level two. Hope rolls don't get them all killed. Indeed. Uh, that is the one thing about Dungeons and Dragons that uh, can be really fun or really suck. And it's as simple as, hey, you have a really cool character. Wouldn't it be a shame if your dice couldn't roll above a seven? Wouldn't it be absolutely awful? I had a friend uh, back when I used to be able to play Dungeons and Dragons in real life when there was actual people nearby. Uh, who we assumed had cursed dice. Uh, he literally could not roll above a nine. It was one through nine, and it was really awful. And I felt so bad for them. Eventually, we, uh, we threw their dice away because we just assumed it was cursed. Like, I think we did like three sessions of that before we just threw their dice away and bought him new dice. Not just my dice rolls. <laughs> Hello, rat man. <laughs>
Hello, Drugan. Again, before we get ourselves situated, I am simply giving time for the players uh, to be able to get themselves situated. And I hope that uh, in the meantime, that Discord Reactive Images fixes itself. smell the brimstone in there. Wrong campaign. That's the secrets of yours, sir. That's this Sunday. Which I'm also super excited for because we didn't get to play the secrets of yours. And uh, you guys are about to face off against the Vumpire, so... I'm very much looking forward to that. It's great because I've, I've just been looking forward to D&D. &D. It hasn't been like, oh god, I have to do a lot of prep and play this game. The entire time I've been running Cometh the Fall and Secrets of Eris, it's been nothing but a good time. I'm really excited. Oh god. Hello. <laughs> I was 
adjusting things I didn't even realize. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Momo, very much for the raid. I greatly appreciate that. I hope there's waddles everywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Striker, for the reset. I appreciate that. <laughs> Hello to everyone. Uh, for those of you who do not know, greetings in a moment. I am the Crown DM. Uh, I run this game, Cometh the Fall, and I run Secrets of Earst. We waddle, we ghost, and love for Momo. That's right. We're cute. Like a waddle emote. Oh, Octo, thank you very much for the resub. Three months. <laughs> and Prostar, thank you for the uh, the Prime for three months. Thank you, guys. Hmm, <laughs> here's more models. <laughs> we do a little bit of subbing around here. Ooh. Something wrong with my mic? Oh, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> I saw your emote, or I saw your, your comment, Sky, so I was like, oh god. Everything's wrong. What happened? It's falling apart. Thank you guys very much for your generosity. It looks as if uh, the others are ready. I'm going to give them a little bit of time to warn them that I'm unmuting. And then we'll be moving over and introducing our players of Cometh the Fall and getting right into episode nine. Oh God. Zoro, thank you very much for uh, Zoro Crusader. Thank you very much for the resub. Three months. God. It's amazing how much time has gone by. Uh, it's only been three months. Like, we only just started in December. But God, this has been so much fun. Like, I haven't even realized that that much time has passed. Everything was going by so quick. <laughs> we knocked out Affiliate. Uh, we have the path to partner achieved. We'll be able to, to reapply soon. Yeah, it's almost March. All right, Doctor. Yeah, so uh, one of the players, uh, who some of you might know, uh, Sparks, was kind enough to make me some uh, some emotes. Not all of them got approved, uh, but the natural 20 and the natural one did. However, uh, for some reason, Twitch uh, adjusted and like <laughs> flattened one of them. <laughs> it like made the, the nat one really chunky for some reason. Uh, so I'll have to go back in and adjust them and, uh, make sure that they are the, uh, like, make sure that they're appropriate and match and you can actually read the numbers on them. Yeah, like, look how, like, look how chonky that one is. <laughs> and that wasn't her. Her, the emotes were great. That was purely Twitch being like, I'm going to condense your emote now. No, please! Indeed, she did a great job. Oh, 
That's very kind of you, Octal. I absolutely, uh, I'll absolutely reply when I'm able to. That's very kind of you. All right. I've given the players an uh, ample amount of time. Let's go ahead and let's go see him. Hello, everyone. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> Oh, good. Yeah, uh, the reactive images isn't broken anymore. <laughs> oh, no. Huzzah. Yeah, it was showing a, a weird error image in lieu of everybody's actual image, so. Oh, oh wow. Indeed. Uh, Sabine got new character art. The commission finished really quick. Hi, everybody. Indeed. I'm fixing it, uh, her picture right now. Oh, okay. What's going on? Hello, everyone. Greetings. Come and I hope everybody's having a good day today. It's D and D day. Indeed, mm -hmm. it's the start of the weekend, which means D and D <laughs> weekend. That comment made me feel so tired all of a sudden. <laughs> wow, all right. <laughs> uh, if everybody's ready, we're going to go ahead. We're going to have everybody introduce their characters, similar as we've done every week. Alaric, seeing as you're so tired, let's wake you up. Go ahead and introduce your character, please. Uh, That's cruel. Of course. Hello, everyone. I play Alaric de Karim, a half elf in the Nile who considers himself human, sees himself as human, and knows that he is a human. One who altogether abhors the memory of his father, who remembers him as nothing more than an absentee figure of whom the denizens of more urbanized areas of Karim speak only poorly of. It was an elf, after all. He was taken too, stolen away by Hain, Alaric was, as what he believed to be a bargaining ship, but soon found out it was for a much more sinister need. Hain means to make of Alaric a traitor, to potentially sever his family ties to the Rhine dynasty, forsaking their vows and joining some Iron Duke he's never met before, never heard of before, never laid eyes on him, nothing. Who is he? No one knows. But what he does know is, he'll take more than some ill-made chicken to make a traitor of the Caravane sigil. Thank you. Kellen. I play Kellen Aldane. He is a uh, variant human ranger. He grew up under his father, who was a war hero, and his mother, who has been in and out of his life, but is currently missing as far as he knows. Um, as a member of a, a militant wilderness organization that fights off uh, beast men and moorlings and whatnot, the Grey Watch. Uh, he's embraced his role of uh, you know, fighting for a good cause rather than going to court and being a noble or a knight or anything like that. Um, his current mission was to see what the goings-on were in uh, the south area where he was captured and using this as an opportunity to find out what's going on within the uh, within Haynes Keep. Thank you. Marana. Yes, I play Marana Lamordia, level 2 rogue. Well, Marana has been masquerading as human. That guys may soon be falling sooner than she expected. Invited to Hain Keep, and soon having its purpose revealed to her, though she remains ambivalent about the plan with the Zahagin. She would much rather deal with them than the bigger monster that is Lord Hain. Thank you. Sabine. I play Sabine Lillian Rousset, 
female Asimar Paladin, member of Order of the Rose, a member, a order of escorts and knights who can be hired out throughout Tiros. Born and raised in Katarina, um, she accepted a job down in the Ettenmore only to be imprisoned almost as soon as she got off the boat due to tax evasion. She now finds herself in Haines Keep with a kind of a devil of a deal. Do or do not, she is wrestling with the ideas that if she takes it, if she doesn't take it, either way she finds herself doomed at the current interval. Thank you. Sildona. Greetings. I am Silver de Catalina, Ward of House Etinmo, the Swan Blades. I am a level two fighter who finds beauty in battle, and I would lay my life on the line for house and home. Unfortunately, I have found myself in the unforgiving clutches of Hen Keep, manned and orchestrated by Lord Hain and his goons. I endeavour to seek the real reasons I have been sent here, and I will stop at nothing to find the truth, even pairing up with large fish men to do so. Thank you. Yuria. Hello. I am playing Yuria. Yuria Zairi. Yuria of Shademore. Yuria of House Athelion. I am a level two warlock of the party. I come from a distant land of Shademore, a human settlement in the continent of Kereso, the land of elves. Though my people live in Kereso, it is rumored that they originally were refugees of Tiros. Because of this, I have traveled to Tiros here in the Atmore to discover the lost origins of Shademore, only to find myself quickly captured by Lord Hain's men for spell casting without a sponsor and murder of his guard. At first, I was a prisoner like any other ordered to do menial labor, thrown into the arena at my expense. Lately, however, I have found my ability as a politician to be utilized, and I find myself grasping at the threads of control once again. Having orchestrated and partnered, orchestrated a deal and partnered with my party, we are now on a mission to undo Lord Hain and ally ourselves with the Sahagin, as well as potentially the Orcs. All we need to do is put Torig in the Bastille. Thank you. It is the 23rd of God's Night. Having managed to turn the encounter into their favor, the party within Hain Keep have allied themselves with the Sahagan Priestess and her warriors to bring down Lord Hain. Their plan discussed at length, she gives her mantle of leadership to them to provide proof to Hain of her defeat. Managing to bypass the potential threat of the crabs, thanks to the blessing of the Priestess, the party exit the caverns of the sight of Captain Kinsley and his enforcers. Relieved of their weapons, Lord Hain and his priests are summoned to deal with the returned heroes. Learning of their failure to gather ahead from the creature within, however, Lord Hain takes out his frustration on Alaric, whom claimed responsibility, though to no effect, the half-elf of Kareem holding strong against the cheap strikes. Amused by the show and their tenacity, they've proven themselves well enough to be invited to dinner with Lord Hain to discuss their invitation. Sent to their cells, they prepare as the hours stick by. Finally, called by the guards, the party are awoken and stirred, moved out of their cells and brought into the lift, where they rise to meet the roiling dark skies above. It's here the party are introduced to the order Lord Hain has been speaking of, their invitation into the circle serving a figure known as the Iron Duke. 
What follows is the party's best attempt at stalling, managing to buy themselves at least three days to decide if they will accept the offer, or if they'll remain in hang keep permanently. Time is ticking and moving against the players, and this is where our story picks up. The lift descending. The audible crank and groan of the machinery as it falls deeper and deeper into Hain Keep. The black cells around you. You are eventually escorted out and brought back to your prison cells. If you look at your character sheets, you'll see that your rough-spun clothing has been replaced with common clothing. Fit with a loose shirt, baggy breeches, and simple shoes. You all have been escorted back into your respective cells. What are you all doing? (laughs) Yuri, yeah. waiting a moment for the guards to disappear, will carefully remove the knife she lifted uh, out of her clothes and uh, begin the strange process of uh, attuning it to her patron. Oh no. She would be in the corner, slumped over the knife, gently rubbing her hand against the side of the blade, muttering to it very softly. Uh, Roll me an arcana check. There is a moment where, as you've begun attuning to your weapon, binding your new packed weapon, you will also find that it is on your character sheet as well. You hear the the sort of low, just... There's the faintest touch of that teal light, but it fades just as quickly as it appears as there is uh, some modicum of light nearby. Once it is done, she will whisper to it. Good to have you back. She then quickly glances over her shoulder, making sure no one saw the faint glow. Alaric is right there. <laughs> Staring, by the way. You would see this hunched over woman just almost like, like Gollum with the ring, just uh, hunched over. <laughs> Roll me a perception check, Alaric. Like <laughs> Against the bars, by the way, like <laughs> flat, <laughs> staring, like all <laughs> angling weirdly. His tongue is like halfway into your cell, attempting to fit his, his eyes face through the bars. <laughs> How yeah. long is it? His eyes just wet and staring. Perception set. Uh, Oh, <laughs> yes. if, if you would like, yeah, you can roll a sleight of hand. You I'll need to beat a 24. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but you didn't. But you, but you didn't. Did. Holy shit. Yeah, Starting out strong. Okay. This is gonna fuck us later. Yeah, we're gonna oh pay for this goodness. later in spades. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you would have seen, you'd have heard the before finally this faint glow, this very subtle uh, moonlight hue 
that takes the corner of her cell just as quickly as it appears. It vanishes, but it's enough for you, your keen elven eyes, to catch. I always knew you were raving, Matt. She, she just stares back. Nutty as a fruitcake. Why are you talking to the cutlery? <laughs> she would use telepathy on him. He would hear in his mind. Silence! <laughs> Alaric makes a really face and then does a loop on his ear with an index finger. <laughs> Cuckoo! He shrugs, pushes himself off of the wall, and sits back on the bed. <laughs> Scowling at the window that Alaric used to inhabit, she would immediately try to uh, hide the knife. She would cut a small hole in the mattress and uh, slip the knife into the uh, into the mattress. There's a moment that you realize as you're cutting this fabric that like there's the the sort of use of cutlery and the like uh, not often equipped with you know cutting more than whatever it's made for bread knives cutting bread having a hard time cutting meat for example there's a something weird about being attuned to this blade that makes it feel strange as you go like cut through the fabric, it almost glides. Like that moment when you're cutting paper with scissors and it just moves of its own accord. Mm -hmm. Just sort of cutting through the fabric. And as you hide the knife, you would watch as surrounded in complete darkness, there is a very subtle hue. Does it, does it glow through the mattress? Roll my perception check. <laughs> Taking a step back, watching it, it does not. She lets out a very soft breath of relief. Another sour glance towards the window. It's been entirely vacated by now. <laughs> She would rest upon her bed. Careful, now with the knife inside. She would not flop on top of it, but <laughs> gently lower herself down. Gargalad so as... tastes your blood. <laughs> no! And she would still whisper to it. <laughs> Do I hear the whispers now that I'm waiting for them? You God, know, I, wish, I them? wish we had a stress system. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god As she's from to the butterfly from the darkness you would hear yeah. see you didn't hear anything I did not pick up that's fine no yes you hear whispering <laughs> given your close proximity in the window you would absolutely hear whispering Alaric would pick his pillow and try to stuff it between the bar. Uh, <laughs> you would ruin your pillow. Or oh, are they like wet and ugly and all that? Yeah, they're not like, they're not mm -hmm. good pillows. <laughs> okay, he takes a look of the bars, considers his pillow, thinks better of it, and tosses it back onto the bed. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> She jumps. Oh, you immediately sorry. gain 15 stress. She gets up, meeting him at the window. Face pressed between the bars, hands gripping them. What is the matter with you? I can hear you. I can hear you. <laughs> yes, but I am here alone. You're talking to something. Why? She looks towards the cell door. Look. What? 
What? Waiting for a moment to see if the guards would do anything, she looks back. You're star craving mad, aren't you? You've gone insane. The being here has gotten to you. She's just staring back silent. <laughs> oh. Truly, I thought you were stronger than that. Now look at you, talking to yourself. Can you believe it? Well, of course you can. You're living it. <laughs> Alric looks over his shoulder to see if Sabine is there. And then he looks across to see if anybody's seeing what he's seeing. After watching him look around, there's a small smile on her face. Did you, you saw the glow too, didn't you? Who's to say you aren't joining me in that madness? What are you talking about? You're fucking. I didn't up. see any glow. Hear, hearing the whisper, Sabine's going to walk to the w window. Well, if you didn't see anything, then I guess I'm talking to nothing. Uh, that is that is what I said. Why? What are you two prattling on about? Alaric startles with Sabian's voice. <sighs> nothing. Alaric just wishes to waste time in the cells. He is incredibly bored and very nosy. No, no, no. She was talking to... And he realizes that his voice carries, right? That it's heavy. So he very gently, mousily steps closer <laughs> towards Sabine's bars. She's talking to herself? Or maybe something <laughs> in her hand? I don't know. I can't sleep because I hear her. And it's troubling. It really is. So, you, let, let me get this completely clear. You can't sleep because Yuri is having a conversation with herself. And that's why you're keeping me awake? Look, I know a lot of people who get very easily obsessed, but I respect their hustle. But this, messing with my sleep, I cannot avoid it. Yuria, can you stop muttering to yourself? Yuria rolls her eyes. Very well. I appreciate it. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. Now, Alaric, can you go to bed? <laughs> As they're exchanging words, Alaric's like nodding over and over. Like, see, see, <laughs> back and forth. Do not interrupt your religious debate. She snarks as she goes back to bed. <laughs> Caddy. She's going insane. Insane. Telling you. Should have seen what I saw. She was crouching, squatting against the wall. Like an animal. Talking to her hand. I don't know. It was made no sense to me. Whatever. People have different mechanisms of coping. Who am I to judge? Well, they should learn to keep them to themselves. I want to sleep. So toxic. Cop, Cope, <laughs> Eve, Mauled. Alaric, the toxic gamer. <laughs> what do you mean? He just like rushes up to the bars. I'm going to say the K word. <laughs> Marana, Kellen, and Silduru, what are you three doing? <clears throat> uh, where's the... There are guards nearby, right? Roll me a perception check. Ooh. You're currently in the middle cell. Ooh. Perception. Go. Pretty good. From your window and being able to peer out, there's no guard that you can immediately see. And I hear them snuffling and making complainy guard noises. <laughs> Complain. 
yeah, there is the ambient sound of the guard, like, yeah. Fucking hate my job. Fucking mouth breathing over in there in the corner, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm Fucking assholes want to stop talking. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Talking to themselves. Fucking nut jobs. Arguing over dumb shit. Fucking cope seed mauled over here. Normal guard noises. Got it. Yeah, imagine like generic, uh, generic Muttering. henchman sound is the subtitle at the bottom. <laughs> generic minion sound as I'm suddenly brought into Despicable Me. What, what are you Gelato. doing? Gelato. Gelato. <sighs> uh, I'm sitting on. Actually, what's the quality of this loot that I've been uh, given? It's like a kind of a piece of junk you find in a pawn shop, it's or is it passable. actually? It's it'll do the trick, but yeah. it's not good. Fair. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna try and tune it a little bit. You know, plucking a few strings here and there, and see if there's anything either Marana or Sildaril has to say at the moment. Sure. Go ahead and roll me a performance check. Marana, Sildaril. Sildaril is uh, laying on her bed, staring at the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> just right. listening to Alaric and and just her eyes twitching a little bit as she listens to them. <laughs> like what the fuck? Prattle on as she's like. Mm. Forced to endure the. Uh... <laughs> the madness that is Alaric's inability to sleep. After a while, Yuri will start muttering again. <laughs> wow. It's... Yes. I feel like I've been pulling the weight around here. It's time for you to start helping. Marana. Huh. Not a whole hell of a lot that can be done right now. But I don't know, ever since she got the new stuff for her room for Lord from Lord Hain, um I don't know, maybe check over the room and the the things once again, see if there was anything that she missed the first time around. She's kind of pacing during this time while the um, the chatter goes on and Sildaro kind of seething in her cell. There's nothing uh, different this time around. Nothing's changed from your previous investigations. The number of days that you've been here. Uh, Amounting more or less to a week now, having been here for about a week's time. Nothing has changed. If there's nothing else, no discussions or anything like that, that would be had. Sabine would actually be um, going to that happy place while praying. Um... Asking Sariel to give her strength in the decision she must make because there is no real winning in the decision. Um, kind of praying her regrets of not seeing her brother possibly one last time. Um, just trying to take comfort in that headspace that is that room with like the red tinted room with the curtains and the like the plush and everything like that that she kind of goes to to keep herself sane in this place cute understood uh if Yuria reels it in stops talking to herself hmm. uh Alaric will go tattletale immediately to Bahamut he's gonna try to commune <laughs> with the platinum dragon what the Bro, you're telling God right now? I will what try. He's gonna dial nine one dragon. This is literally the I'm telling God meme. 
Yeah. Yeah, it is. Jesus on you. Closing your eyes and attempting to commune, both of you. Uh, both of you roll me religion checks. Uh, yes, yes. Very good. Fuck. <laughs> very bad. Closing your eyes, attempting to expand yourself beyond your body, opening your mind to the realities of gods. You, more times than not, interrupted just by the general ambience of the prison. There are moments where it's so quiet, your vision retracting, the sounds becoming so much louder. It's not even the whispering that draws your attention. You can hear the ever so subtle striking of stone from the mines as it echoes up through the main uh, lift. You can hear what sounds like combat, things fighting, the sort of ambient noises of things deeper within the keep. But every time you attempt to connect, there is nothing. <laughs> he ain't picking up, man. Mm. Fucking tattletale. <laughs> I'm going to try and connect on a different level. This one is kind of like sending out the twin sense to the brother. Yo, bro, oh. I'm in danger. Sure. I don't know what check that would be under any way, shape, or form. Hi or low? Uh, hi. It's nothing immediate. It's nothing that even comes to you when you're conscious. There comes the inevitable moment where your body fails you and sleep takes you. Your senses drowned out, pulled back, and your mind allowed to drift and wander. That place in between, between consciousness and dreaming. And you feel the ever so subtle moat, this sensation that is almost distant, like a faintly beating heart. There's no response aside from that. She would still talk. Laurent, I don't know if you can hear me. I just want to say I'm sorry. I've gotten myself into a situation I don't know I can get out of. And if I can't get out of it, please forgive me. I didn't want to leave and I didn't mean to leave. Just take care of Avril, please. Everybody go ahead and mark a long rest on your character sheet. Several more minutes of Yuria droning on before she eventually passes out. Oh. So she did. Shackles, these stand shackles your dreams are uneventful save for those who attempted to connect with their god met with a more white noise like dream the others simple dreams thoughts of home thoughts of comforts that you used to know And the name, the Iron Duke, ringing out in your minds. 
you are eventually awoken. The approaching footfalls of the guards, their leather and chain mail announcing their presence far beyond their words. You would hear the grunt of annoyance as the guards begin ringing the bell, waking you up. Now, is there any conversations that would be had in the galley during breakfast? Now it depends if our orc friend is there. Escorted mm, in, good point. <laughs> you would see that the only individuals in there are you. Probably not, then. Which is much different from a lot of the other situations that you've been in. There have always been other prisoners during breakfast. It's only you six. Your meals are different as well. It is actual food. I am suspicious. I am suspicious. Is the captain there? Guard captain is there, yes. But it appears that it's only him and two other uh, mm. individuals. Who's serving? Uh, oh. It looks to be one of the enforcers, not a prisoner. So there are three enforcers behind the bar. Kinsley and two other guards within the main chamber. You have the run of the room. It is you six. The food that you are served is, again, much different from the usual slop that you are served. This is actual vegetables and fruit. You see that there are spreads of uh, sort of breakfast meats, long loaves of bread for you to cut up and eat. Various pitchers of uh, water and juices. Skeptical. How close are the guards? Are we able to murmur without them hearing? Two of them are in the far corners of the room. If you were to sit directly in the center of that long table, you assume you'd be able to be out of their hearing. Interesting. Now, this is purely if you would like to have a conversation here. If not, then you may enjoy your breakfast. And we'll get right to the rolls. <laughs> um, Very well. Rolls as in going to the mines rolls or? Oh, no. Oh, boy. I was afraid of that. Well. <laughs> Sorry. Somebody get that dog. Ah. Sorry. What's that little chihuahua doing? Why are you barking like that? No, that was me catching myself on a sneeze. That's what happened. I said what I said. <laughs> okay. I wasn't fast enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um... I'd like to try... Morana's still under the assumption that we are going to the mines. Let me transition for all of you. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> She's under that assumption. And that's her operating assumption right now. That being said, um, she might want to try and pocket some food for potential bribes. Some of the nicer stuff. Okay. Now, I know we don't uh, win. If you would mm -hmm. read your common clothes. 
Oh, I know. But it's all pretty loose-fitting, and she's very small. Okay. <laughs> Go so ahead she and... Can probably try to stow some in uh in one of the shirts like some of that right good shit you know kind of where it would drape a little bit more sure not like a whole fucking loaf of bread but like enough to potentially entice <laughs> someone go ahead and roll me a sleight of hand trick <sighs> 12. Did I get any certain kind of like bonuses for sitting in between two people? <laughs> I'm trying, man. <laughs> sure. Would anybody who is proficient with sleight of hand like to assist? Oh God. Who is proficient with sleight of hand? Uh... Not proficient, oh, but I have a plus four. <laughs> Proficiency only. Damn it. Nobody else? Not permission, so I can't. You would see Marana attempting to stow some of the food, uh, much like a student attempting to cheat on a test from your neighbor. Your eyes flick up and catch Guard Captain Nathan Kinsley staring directly at you and holding that stare for several long beats. And then his attention drifts to the right. It's safe to assume he saw you. Well, I tried. He's not stopping you, nor has he made any comment, but he's staring, or was. His attention is currently panning over the room. Well, in which case I might, if he pans away, just take some more. Who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah, I did it. What about it? She's got a three-course meal in her clothes. It's the whole turkey. Whole floor turkey. Shirt looking a little lumpy. <laughs> I mean, it's probably just like a little bit of stuff. Just little handfuls. But yeah. Some loose cashews that <laughs> peter out every other step. An apple. I don't know. If there's no conversation. There is going to be one roll made by one party member. <clears throat> this will determine your activity for today. Who would like to roll a D100? Only one of you. And there's only one shot. Do I even have to say it? Say what? Be my guest. <laughs> Don't you worry, none, guys. I got this. <laughs> yeah, what do you say? 100? Yeah. Give me a sec. You're leaving it to Alaric? Sounds like he's eager. By all means. Nobody's saying nothing. I don't no. think I got it. Of course. So. Go ahead and roll me all that right. D100. Kills me with confidence. I don't got to say high or low or nothing like that. Just... Nope. Okie doke. There it is. Well, you know, just out here rolling dice with my friends. Snake eyes. Understood. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> is there any conversation that is being had between the party during your the course of your breakfast? Uh, no. So a rather quiet Unless anyone wants to say something. I mean, we did agree to act like everything was normal beforehand, so that's why the party's acting like everything is normal. Like, you know, nothing's changed, y'all. <laughs> I 
I'd imagine though that between them is that understated feeling that the orc is not there and that's a problem. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's yeah. about it. You're no right. Toro. If you're going to say something, say it. <laughs> no. No, I'm good. Understood. Your breakfast is uneventful, uninterrupted, allowing you to consume as much as you like. There doesn't appear to be a time limit compared to other times you've been here. You are allowed to enjoy your meal and your drinks. Eventually, seeing that most of you have finished your meals, or are just idly picking at food now, you would hear the uh, clearing of his throat from Captain Kinsley. Lord Hain has determined your actions for today. You'll be heading to the arena. <laughs> If you have finished your meals, please put your plates in the trays. Are we going to watch? You'll be participating. Oh. See, I left my participating underwear back in my seat. A shame. Looks like Didn't you have think to go you'd without care. it. Indeed. They gave you undergarments. Silver leans across the table very seriously and looks at him. Helen looks at her like, you don't have any? None of you do. Kellen oh. just realizes his, he's going commando. Well, in the wilderness, we always go commando. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, your, your common clothes and your uh, rough spun garb Neither of them had undergarments. What is this barbaric place? Tank keep. Welcome. Pretty, pretty sure commoners just didn't have underwear ever, by the way. <laughs> just had like a little... Just like, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a potato sack rolled up the legs and a rope and let's go. <laughs> That's it. I could, I could kill for a pair of underwear and a decent bustier. What? Razier. A little, a little support for the girls, and she would gesture, gesture to her boobs. Kellen has at least enough decency to look a bit. Um. Oh. 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 <laughs> the Alaric stares. Placid, <laughs> neutral expression of. <laughs> The guard captain begins to knit his brows together, and you can begin to see some semblance of emotions forming on his face, and it's annoyance. <laughs> of course it is. All right, all right. She would get up and take her plate. Thank you. So they're all still like, hello? <laughs> Yeah, we'll do the whole taking the, the tray of the empty tray of food. All that good stuff. Oh, Kellen's taking the bowls? Great. Yuri would push hers towards him. I think Alaric would grab Yuri as halfway big oh, push to him, sort of taking care of his side of the table. Once you have uh, placed the various plates and bowls in the receptacle, he gestures over towards the door. The one on the left? The one to the right. The one okay. to the left takes you to the shower. Yep. This attention lingers on the three still at the table. Yep, just does the whole thing. 
Oh, okay, cool. The measure thing works again. Nice. It got updated. Solar sighs and realizes that uh, Alaric and his infinite wisdom was joking. And she frowns <laughs> as she looks at her uh, plate and fin begins to finish her food. <laughs> Kicked in like 30 seconds later. <laughs> Just snaps too like Duh. Seeing that you're eating, uh, the the sort of frustration that was on Kinsley's face settles as you are like you're you've resumed eating, not gawking. So he waits until you're done. So it all seems almost sad. Like it's like an emotion of like I hate it. I thought he was being I thought he was being real. False Trixie. While lounging at the door. You know, food was very good today. You're saying that to Kinsley, or are you saying that to the people? <laughs> to the party. Okay. Here he turns. Agreed. Definitely a step up from the normal slot. I appreciated the good meal. Mm. I'm starting to believe, hey, might well think we're better than nothing. now. Ho oh, oh. ho! That's right. Her eyes would peer around to see uh, if how intently the guards are listening, if they are. The one closest to you, one of the ones that you would have recognized from the dining hall, uh, clad in plate mail, is stood there. His attention sort of lazily sweeping over the party. Sort of studying the faces and features of you. Taking in each one. You can see the sort of movement of the eyes caught and caught by the reflection of the light from uh, through the visor, the little slit that's there. Just sort of watching, studying. If he's interested, it's not shown aside from just the movement of the eyes. Solar would finally finish. She stands up, still like affected by the fact that she, you know, thought he was being honest. Is she does she look at him while she no, walks by? It's just a general face. Solar <laughs> okay. lamenting the loss of her own battle panties. Undergarments are nice, okay, especially if you were in battle. She and looks you got battle <laughs> ones, and you got your social ones. You got your lazy. She ones. peers in here to look for her friend. Well, it's just enforcers. You see figures clad with leather armor and chain mail. They're sort of, uh, even being here working, sort of clad with like a, a very simple leather apron. Uh, they still have like their weapons on them. There doesn't appear to be any other prisoners here. They sort of look at you curiously as you approach. She would instinctively, it's like a, it's like a noble head tilt, you know, that they do to each other as she does it to them and walks away frowning. You place your and, uh, items in the, the, yep, perfect. It is perfect as it slides down, like perfect <laughs> as she does every time. I was about to say every time. No sound, just the very soft acknowledgement at the bottom as the trays uh, sort of hit. No clatter or no throw, anything like that. Yep, it is perfect. That seems to settle her mood as she walks back towards the door. I did it. I did it. The guard captain gestures to the other beside him, who gives a... Uh, Gives a small nod in reply and approaches the door. Uh, you would watch as he reaches past, 
sort of rasping his knuckles across the surface a few times. The door eventually clicks and opens, and you are led out of the galley through the black cells and are eventually escorted to the arena. Do, 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 do. Let me do a map transition for you. Stepping in, you would notice that the room has changed a small degree. The, at least the main platform area that you had stepped onto previously now is equipped with two chairs. You would see uh, the plated individual sat, lounged back, arm resting up on one of the, uh, one of the armed rests and his, uh, his chin uh, sort of pressed to his knuckles as he's watching, a rather lazy expression. The figure, the mouth of the Iron Duke, stood beside the large contraption which opens and closes the prison. And another figure, clad in very ornate armor. As we transition over. This figure seems to be having a rather enjoyable time talking more so at Lord Hain instead of having a mutual conversation. You would hear the sounds of combat ringing out, a loud sort of grunt, these harsh noises, more guttural than anything. The sound of steel catching against steel. As within the arena, Torug faces off against two Morlings. Oh, shit. The guards at your side grunt and gesture you down to the prisoner side. All righty, all righty. Uh, Alaric. I was just going to say that he motions people along and he goes in last. Yuri would pause for a brief moment to inspect uh, for any insignia, any notable uh, symbols. Maybe. Absolutely. Uh, for those of you that are inspecting the individual, you would see that there are segments of dark green that are adorn uh, the large cloak that he has sort of pulled to the side and pushed off so he can sit down. Uh, the large heraldry that's there. Uh, you would see. Give me a moment. This bitch. This bitch. <laughs> oh, is that, is that familiar to you? Is that, this is that familiar to you? Do you recognize that? Is the color scheme sh seem striking? <laughs> oh, what are you doing? Well, what is this? I'm waiting. Where'd I put it? This bitch. You would see various segments of green, dark and light. Uh, the most prominent portion of the heraldry being this ornate, lustrous tree adorned with golden yeah. acorns and twin blades on either side. A member of House Ashford, the sworn blades of the Ittenmore. You bitch. Oh! He is sad, you bitch. sort of... Uh, talking at this, talking at Lord Hain. Rather amused in this conversation, the Lord Hain looks utterly displeased. Do I recognize him? Do I? <laughs> Both of you roll me history checks. My God. Uh. Oh, that's a is this, a, is this an open roll or? Are you, would you at all be familiar with House Ashford or the territory of the Ettenmore? Can I roll for the advantage? <laughs> um, maybe on a, uh, a kind of 
scholarly level. I don't know if my my father put too many uh, too many feelers out there to see any eligible people there. How experienced is Marana when it comes to the court dealings of other high lords? This bitch. Unfortunately, I would say her father has kind of kept her from that, with the exception of like this or that would be a good match for you to get as far away from here as possible. Then I am afraid not. All right. Both of you would recognize this individual. Sat beside Lord Hain is the advisor of the High Lord of House Ashford, a figure of some prestige, uh, a lord within the court. You would be very familiar, Sidhuri. Oh, yeah, I'm sure I've seen him at fucking house dinners and parties and shit. I'm sure I would be very... The fact that this figure is here without the High Lord should be some degree of worry. Solar sits down next to Kellen just with this sour expression of a combination of confusion, anger, and like a twinge of betrayal. Both of you would know this individual to be uh, Torsten Ashford. This bitch. What's that? That's an uncle? That's a grandfather? That's a... That is a... uh, This is a man who had married into the family. He is a uh, sort of very low-tier noble. However, through some means or some actions on his own part, he has earned his advisor position, which has brought with him a lot of luxuries, often unseen by many nobles who marry into courts like this. Bitch. Watching as you all pass the figure's uh, sort of amusement talking, he turns to look at you, sort of seeing the entourage that has approached and his focus lingers on you, Sildurel. And it goes from this amused haha expression to very neutral. Sildurel, as she would pat, is he, does he look at her while she walks by? Nope, as soon as you sit down. There's a sharp, like, pinpoint pupil, like, look she doesn't turn her face to look at him. Nothing. Just at the corner of her eye, just this slitted look before she lifts her nose and looks into the main part of the arena. How, it is How low did he... Sorry. Go ahead. It is in that moment where you would see he's staring at you. You would see the amusement return to Lord Haynes' face, a smugness that crosses his features as he turns his attention back to the fight. This bitch. So yeah, how low did Torsten marry? (laughs) Uh... In terms of, uh, like, nobility, we're talking, like, later daughters. Like, like sort of oh. middling daughters. So he bought himself a title. Indeed. Not an inheritance. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. He bought himself power, right? A, a, a crest that holds something in other courts. The name, Indeed. essentially. Opened them up a lot of doors, obviously. Was he a commoner beforehand, or? Uh, what be another history check? This Ooh. is sort of going to tie into how familiar you are with Ashford's court, because you would know more about Rofield and Cream than you would Ashford. And he'd ignore what his mother tells him too. He didn't care. Oh. Oh. Uh, the situation for Torsten is a previous, uh, a, a previous vassal of Rofield. 
who, when deprived of power by the various, uh, the High Lord of House Steel, sought power elsewhere. You would know from the political map, uh, the territory. Uh, the territory of Ludenberg once belonged to House Steel, has since fallen into hands of House Ashford. This individual oh. is why. Oh, that makes sense. So he's a turncloak who added the Ashford name to his lineage for protection. And it's, the cost was the keep. It's very the safe location. to assume. Okay. I'm on to you, Torsten, you little shit. I see you playing the game. I don't understand why my face looks the way it does. As all of you approach, the uh, the sort of amusement, the excitement that Torsten had, Lord Torsten, settles upon seeing Silveril, his expression becoming very neutral, where Lord Haynes' expression becomes very wide, very mm. grinning. The amusement of this situation not lost on him as he sort of reclines further back into his chair, watching now as Torug fights against the two Morlings. What are you all doing? Seeing the the look on her face and kind of following it to mm. the stranger, Kellen kind of like nudges her and is like, "Who's that?" In this place. Uh, having heard her answer <laughs> from over her head, Alaric adds, "That is Thorsten Ashford." I guess we can assume if he's here talking to Hain, then he's probably in on whatever it is he's doing. I am certain the greed brought him here, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's facilitating ways for Hain to make his trades. Perhaps he's squeezing him as we speak. I would like to do the same. You'll get your chance. I'll make sure of it. Don't promise, Egil. I promise you can't keep. Oh, but I can. There is a moment where you would, all of you talking, sort of giving passing glances up to Thorsten, you would see him sort of maintaining eye contact, but lean over to the left as if whispering to Hain, and Hain's grin grows wider as he replies, gesturing in the direction of you, Alaric. And you can see this man's face, Torsten's face, go blanch white. I imagine this be like exactly when he says, oh, but I can. And then he leans out from the parapet and waves at Torsten with a really long toothy grin. Pain is this aura of just excitement now. The situation having revealed itself, the figure looks almost sick. They look like they want to be anywhere else right now. As to be expected of a rat. Hmm. How's Toreg doing down in the arena fighting he two more? looks beat. Uh, there's a there's a moment where you would watch as he's sort of swinging. There's that desperation in the swing. There's that exhaustion that's there. The sort of he's letting the axe do most of the work. He himself is just sort of along for the ride, a vehicle for the weapon. Uh, and you would watch as the Morlings, the Morlings also look not in the best condition. You've seen Morlings out in the wild. These almost seem like emaciated, like they've purposefully been starved. Uh, 
in which making them more desperate and feral. You would see that at times they even sort of cast their weapon aside to just attack with teeth and claws. Is he winning, son? Roll me an uh, inside check. Fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, yeah, he looks, even in this situation, this desperation on his face, he is still holding his own. Which is very surprising, given the amount of bruises and lacerations that are on his body. He looks like he's barely holding on. Like he's been here for days. However, as you all are sat, waiting and watching, there is the final strike that you hear, that roar of desperation that comes from Toruk as he swings his axe, sort of catching one of the morlings in the throat. You watch as the body shakes violently, its final death throes before collapsing to the floor, catching a claw across the length of his chest. Uh, you would watch as... Torag himself collapses, the body falling with a heavy, a heavy thud of finality before his body twitches and shudders, knuckles pressing to the stonework as he pushes himself up, that orcish resilience showing itself in his final moments, catching... Uh, the creature who was now turning to look back at Lord Hain, you would watch as he sort of cups his hand underneath the strange snout of the boar-like creature and driving the like twisted morling blade through its back, catching it unaware as its body shudders violently, its screams muffled by the hand holding its mouth closed. As the body eventually slumps and falls to the floor, Torug breathing heavily. He looks mortal. Silver so looks concerned. Mm -hmm. But not in like a. Oh my god! Like that kind of way, it's just like a... Mm. Kellen's like leaning forward like, come on. Yuria also would be leaning forward, trying to focus on Torg, but... Well. My... Foundry just did something wonky. Hold on. Oh, oh. oh no! Sorry, I focused too hard. I don't know what just happened. Is Foundry still up for everybody? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. How bizarre. It crashed for me. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get Silly Ghost Silly Foundry. Again. Foundry broke before the orc did. <laughs> I won't be beaten. Except maybe Silly a little bit. Silly Foundry, you can't do that. Or it just takes down your whole game before anything can happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your game ends here. No, wait. Okay. <laughs> With the two Morlings defeated, you would watch Tora look up at Lord Hain, who his amusement in the moment is sort of being stifled momentarily, having to look away from the uh, sort of sick expression of the person uh, of Lord Torsten at his side, turning now to look at Torug. He gives a nod, a small, almost uncaring nod. The figure at his side, the mouth of the Iron Duke, beginning to mend his wounds. And with a small bow, almost forced, Torug begins to move out of the arena, making his way back to your side. One of the prisoners very quickly moving over as to create more room. As 
Tora gets to the bench. On his way there, Alaric would try to get Yuri's attention by locking eyes. And then very, very gently tilt his head to Tora if she looks at him. <laughs> like, depends. you know, he'd stand up, he'd make himself like a parent, right? To her. Uh, she would probably notice him if Torig passed, like, passed by, since her eyes would be on the orc. So, assuming it's that... Subtle. Yeah, this is Kellen kind of, like, giving her the nod. As well. Uh, her focus never leaves Torig. Well, she doesn't obviously stare. <laughs> But her eyes are on the orc. She uh, forces a sort of a, almost a scowl. Almost mirroring like Creighton's look. Or attempting to in her own way. However, while the face says something, her mind says another. And she would reach out to Torig. All of you would see as well, Torig does not look at any of you. As you sit down, look at him, watch him during the fight, he seems to very pointedly keep his gaze off of you until he sits down. And even then, he is looking into the arena. He is not even turning to acknowledge any of you. Rude, but okay. where is... Oh, God, I just saw... <laughs> I just saw Torsten's face. What mm -hmm. a rat. What a piece of crap. <laughs> I hate him. Anyway... Uh, whereas most of Yuria's sort of telepathies is sort of this invasive, like, thinking for you, but in a different, like, uh, accent with a, a different inner monologue that is quite alien, uh, she would try to gently sort of slip into his mind rather than, like, blunt shock. Uh, shouting. I suppose you don't like the clothes. I agree, they're not very fashionable. Even as you prod his mind, he, he sort of twitches, his eye sort of <laughs> narrowing tightly, but he does not look at you. Good. You would feel him, though unable to, very actively trying to push your words out of his head. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a resistance. There's to not. Him. There's there's the like the attempt to put the wall up, but there is there nothing comes yeah, of it. It's like just like water flowing around the wall. But there's he's certainly it. trying. I don't know what they told you, but we are not joining, Lord Hain. These clothes, this special treatment, it is designed specifically to alienate us from everyone else. As you're talking, Do Lord not. Hain pushes himself up to stand, sort of striding forward as he does. Welcome to those of you who decided to join. We have a special guest here today. You will be as kind as to entertain him with your prowess. I will let you six who entered decide who was fighting who. Do not keep me waiting or I'll decide for you. He sits back down. There is Her face goes Yuria's face grimaces hard This was what she was predicting The first time And it has been so long That what she previously predicted Now came as a shock And unwanted Well, 
would like to play first. Hmm? Not me, thank you, she says audibly, taking on the role of a rather petulant noble. Feather easily. How about you and I go give him a show? Solar would kind of look at her, like... Mm. I suppose it is only fitting. Come on, then. Sabine would, and stand up. You would see, those of you still watching Lord Torsten would watch as both of you decide and both of you stand up his expression falters again and he very quickly turns sort of covering his mouth to begin whispering to Lord Hain whose grin just becomes even wider Solaril's expression is dark Those of you that are fighting, please enter the arena. And state what your weapon is. Shield and rapier, please. Lord Hain. A house Ashfield Zoyhando, my lord. You would see the lips pull back, those sharpened, elongated canines from Lord Hain as he almost rumbles with satisfaction as he pushes himself up to stand again. My lord, won't you be as kind as to gift a weapon? to these brave combatants. You would see Lord Torsten sort of uh, shook by this thing, this offer, sort of swallow hard, give a very sort of meek nod and uh, hurriedly turn to the weapons at his side. Uh, the shield and rapier sort of half-heartedly tossed out into the arena. He sort of holds his white hander and looks at you, Sildurel. Sildurel would whisper underneath her breath, probably only so that uh, Sabine could hear it. She would just whisper, Come on, rat. Give me my weapon. There's a moment where he's watching you, just staring as if lost in this moment, where like time has stopped until Lord Hain sort of turns, the expression with a raised brow, the grin still on his face as he. <clears throat> The figure snapping out of it gives a nod very hurriedly and tosses this Vihander with more emphasis than before, as if trying to get it closer to you. Or I hit you with it. So the, <laughs> er, Sildril's expression is just disgusted as he tosses the Vihander at her. Like, he didn't even have the audacity to treat it properly, just like he does the family. No respect for weaponry. So the road would pick it up. And kind of flay it outward, as if shaking off the filth that was on it. Just from being in his hands. Sabine would pick up her rapier and shield. Now, ladies, take your place in the center of the arena. 
I want an honest fight. If I find that you are being unjust to one another, the Bastille awaits. Now, for both of you, would you like to have a set initiative or re-roll initiative every round? I don't care what you want. I'm cool with either one, so we can do set. Understood. Go ahead and place yourselves in the center of the arena, and we'll begin. I do not have my weapon or my shield on my sheet. I'm, I'm aware. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Let me know if your weapon has been added or not. All right. You have to make sure that you hit the little equip icon beside your weapons. Center of the arena, Sabine. I know. I don't have the shield. You should. Nope, it didn't add to your sheet. Delightful. Let's try that one more time. There we go. Now, if both of you are ready, let's roll initiative. Why are you so close to me? <laughs> no touchy. I really hate your positioning. It looks very not symmetrical to me. It's bothering me a lot. <laughs> sure. So you move up? What? <laughs> oh my god. The I will give you this one opportunity to get yourselves situated. So at okay, least if we're gonna be fighting feet north apart to from south, each other, then fucking get in the center of the arena. <laughs> I'm just trying to stay lined up with you. I apologize. That drove me insane, too. Now, whenever you're ready, Sildaru, let's see that initiative. I do not have a Zwei Hinder, by the way. You have a great sword. You'll have to rename it. <sighs> but your weapon is there, and it's your turn. <clears throat> okay, um, well, shit. Uh, Silra would take the great sword, the white hunter in her hand, and she would set and step forward to fight. She wouldn't give her any movement, uh, to go. Let's see it. Full 20 to her face as she brings the soy hander down. <laughs> it's a 25 to hit. It is a flourish of a hit, too. She's not trying to... You can see in her eyes she's not trying to go for critical hit kind of areas. She is purposely aiming for places where you're... Did they have armor at the time? No? No, you have no armor. You have your common okay. clothes. She's purposely trying to aim for non-lethal spots, and she would know these from being in battle before, so... But it is... a... hurrah of a yell as she does. Sabine would take the hit and just kind of grimace with it. But she is still standing. The strike landing with this sense of 
intensity. Though you try not to hit that cr those critical moments, you do still have those emotions that are bubbling. You can feel the weight of Lord Torsten's stare upon you. Uh, that was your attack action and some of your movement. What else are you doing? That is all for now. Understood. Sabine. Sabine is going to strike back. Also going for a non-lethal area. Pick the two showgirls to put on a show. <laughs> a 12 does not hit, I'm afraid. We like big whipping. Big Sildura whipping. almost bows to you as she dodges. <laughs> you can hear the laughter of Lord Hain, uh, but the rest of you would watch that, uh, the sort of worried. Uh, again, sort of blanch expression of Lord Torsten as he is uh, seeing this whole thing unfold. That was your attack action. Are you doing anything else on your turn, Sabine? No. Silver. I am. Okay, um, Celeril will move in a, a flourish of, of, of footwork as she steps away from Sabine and extends the uh, greatsword outward towards her. If you would like to take an attack of opportunity, Sabine, you may. Unless, Sildaro, you are using your action to disengage. Yeah, sure. Never mind then. You would watch as she steps back with this flourish, this uh, dancer-like momentum that moves her through the arena. Uh, some of the even prisoners sort of gawking and cheering at this motion, enjoying the show. She gives Sabine space to dance as if you will. Alright. Sabine will bring the rapier up upright in the shield and she's going to follow her movements almost step by step mocking the dance. And swing. Let's see it. That is a 24 to hit. So the you suffer seven points of damage. How do you strike her, Sabine? Describe it. Um, the way that she would hit is with the rapier. Rapier is like flourishing and more poking than slashing. So I'm going to go for um, center mass, but not... Um, vital area. So I'm going like along her side, if you would. She's like the way she would flourish the rapier, it would be a quick, um, almost like a whirl motion and then a thrust. Understood. That is your attack action. Are you doing anything for your bonus? Can you do anything for your bonus? I should ask. Um, everything is a spell and I don't think I'm able to do it. Understood. So the row. Being approached by Sabine, you feel the pierce of the rapier on your side. The dance following in momentum with yours. She would cry out in... <clears throat> it's almost like a masochistic way, right? She enjoys the damage that she has 
she has taken because of the way she has taken it. And it would be very familiar to Sabine as, you know, the same kind of sparring sound they would have heard in many different fighting situations. And she would bring her great sword to attack. Let's see it. A 14. Misses. Misses. Sabine would spin the It misses? The I thought she had a 13. Plus her shield. Gives her an AC of 15. Ah, okay. So describe how you guard, Sabine. She'd spin the shield up. Um, was it an overhand strike or was it under? It would have been an overhead. She would have swung the shield up, ducking behind it, catching the blade. So it would grin. And she would... Pull it backward down like a like a heavy <clears throat> like burden that she did not connect to do damage, but it is a smile as she steps away again. Understood. Sabine would get this just wild grin on her face like she's having fun. As she points the uh Zweihander outward again in a uh, and she would take the pose of like very familiar to how she Ashford when they mm. would like point their weapons at someone uh, for those of you in the crowd some of the other prisoners are like sort of standing up now there's this energy in the air that is being uh, this beginning to radiate from the center of the arena outwards. Even some of the enforcers on the other sides are very interested in this bout. Uh, but you would see uh, Lord Torsten, who's sort of like fingers sort of pressing very tightly into his palms, sort of like wringing his hands as he's watching, almost like muttering. Uh, like a, like, come on, come on, come on, like that type. All right, Sildero, that's your turn. Mm -hmm. Sabine. Sabine would dance across the floor to her again, um, finishing with a thrust of her rapier. So it would be like pounce, 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 thrust. Mm, let's see it. Tornover definitely hits. That's another six points of damage. So the room. And how do you strike her, Sabine? This one would be shoulder. It would be a thrust, um, upward thrust to her shoulder. Or actually, I think she's shorter than me, so it'd be forward. Understood. So the room, you are caught in the shoulder by the pierce of the rapier. It's your turn. Okay. Celera would take the hit, you know, and it's a, a, she would, her braided ponytail top would flare outward as she backs up and grips at her shoulder and she would just smile at uh, Sabine as she brings her great sword back around and almost a um, she would have it in her left hand right holding close to the base of the uh, the sword near the pommel and she would turn away gripping her shoulder as her hand comes down to replace as a two handed gesture as she will spin and bring it upward into her side. Ooh, let's see it. A 12 does not hit, I'm afraid. 
Sabine, how do you uh, how do you catch the blade? Sabine would actually guard with her rapier, kind of spinning it to miss her this time, not the shield. Locking eyes with sort of a wide smile on her face, like this is the most fun she's had in a week. Like this is bringing back memories of how she used to spar with her brother and everything, and she's just having a fun time of it. Now she uh, connects and she sees the smile of Savine. The tattooed markings over her body would um, would almost look like they were metallic, but nothing would happen. Because she can't use magic magic, right? Uh, are you, what are you attempting to use? I want to use cure runes, but if it doesn't work, it's fine. Yeah. It wouldn't work, I'm afraid. That's fine. Uh, as they turn this, like, shimmer, right? It's almost as if you could have sworn. The, the like, people around could have sworn that they shined like scales. Sabine would know that it. this is the same thing that happened in the cave. And uh, they would just stay plated and look almost metallic. And uh, I will use my bonus action of second ring. Oh, all right. Not that it did much. Because <laughs> I'm rolling ones, bro. There is the time where those those nat 20s at the start have come back to claim what is theirs. <laughs> I didn't yep. even roll a 20, bro. <laughs> I know, but Restore three them. points. I think I just love wasting your nat 20s on memes. All right. It was your bonus action, your attack action. Are you staying there? Uh, she will step. You know, she's holding out the Zoe Hunter. She lifts it back up and it's almost, um, you know how in like, like epic anime fight scenes, right? The like camera will spin around as they're like stepping around each other and she yeah. will, she will step around to like in this, holding the Zweihander outward as she steps around to face her. Much in the same, like, position as if they were when they started. Hell yeah. That perspective shifting around over the shoulder, sort of moving from left to right, catching behind Sabine's head and then transitioning behind Sildaril's, sort of continuing the momentum to show these two following in movement with one another. With her moving um, outside my hitbox, would I get an attack? <laughs> if you would like to take it, sure. Silverill's face would kind of sour. <laughs> uh, how do you catch her? I would um, catch her in the other shoulder as she goes. Just kind of, she still has that smile like this is just sparring. She's not pulling punches because she knows Kane would punish. Oh, so we are not playing anymore, hmm? This is the most fun I've had in a week. I'm playing, just... I want to show you what I can do. I feel like I've been kind of... not showing the exact extent of my abilities lately. You dishonor with your cheap moves, then, hmm? And she would <laughs> laugh at her. have to watch your footing. Ah, <coughs> uh, you <laughs> types never truly flourish in a fight of battle. You people to lay in beds, hmm? And she would grin widely at her. <laughs> that Even that is a battle. <laughs> ah, your... truly spoken! This is your attack of opportunity. It is your turn, Sabine. Uh, Sabine would move in, close the distance with um, a few graceful steps like the, um, I can't even think of the term. It's the instep and the outstep with the thrust. I understand. 
Where do as I gain are, my... Where's my... Perf oh, there it is. Never mind. <laughs> as Sorry. you are lunging forward, uh, roll me a intelligence saving throw. Fifteen. Uh, there's no effect. Continue your turn. A 12 does not hit. Sildur, how do you catch the rapier? How does it come towards her? As a thrust motion forward. Silra would catch the rapier with the Zoihander and slide it down to the hilt as she turns to push it away. All right. That was your action, some of your movement. Are you staying there, Sabine? Yes, I am staying there. She is not letting the distance between her, and she knows if she moves, she would let herself open. Sildura. In the movement of catching it on her hilt, she would push it upward and attempt to sweep up following it with her greatsword. Let's see it. Uh, that absolutely hits. <laughs> Sabine, you suffer 13 points of damage. And in the movement, I will action surge. <laughs> Describe your sort of flourish that comes with that. Your initial slash upwards. How do you bring the blade back down? She will. So she'll step forward to swing it upward catching right under um under like near the rib cage right so it would slide up the rib cage and she would flay it upward enough so that it didn't harm her breast obviously because she's not a horrible person she's not gonna fucking <laughs> cut into this mm -hmm. you know she's not gonna cut into her breast that's fucked and the in the swing <laughs> she will bring it up and thrust forward with her shoulder and, you know, give this very, very, um, similar hurrah to the training of the Sworn Swords as she will bring it back down on the opposite shoulder. Ooh, let's see it. Fourteen misses, I'm afraid. Sabine, how do you catch the swing? This, as she's coming back down, the shield will spin up again. Um, Sabine's looking pretty bloodied at the current moment, um, and she still has that grin on her face, like, you're going to have to knock me out. This is what I've been wanting. I asked for training earlier, and this is exactly what she was wanting. There's a open mouth, just almost like this it's just grin this feel of like it's a it is a passionate grin as her eyes are wide you know you can see her own like canines as she's smiling in sabine's direction are you staying there Mm-hmm. all right sabine sabine will flourish her rapier and go in for another thrust let's see it In response, uh, if you meet AC, does it still hit? It still hits. What are you attempting to add? I was gonna take a. Uh, I was gonna take up my AC, but I, if it hits, it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, with your draconic ability. Yeah. That uses your proficiency, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That, uh, if you would like to describe that, you may, uh, but it would still hit. 
unfortunate. I'm not gonna use it if it's not gonna help me. Well, no, it wouldn't. It was. This is more a role play moment. He's uh, giving. He's giving you the optics without you having to use it. I mean, I don't think she would use it. Like that's the thing. She would only use it if it's gonna actually help her. But sure. Um, the tattoos on her body will definitely shine this time as they turn into plated golden scales. And these manifested just spectral golden wings will come out of her back and wrap around her body. Hoping to prevent the strike. There is like audible gasps of surprise from numerous prisoners. Even Torag like sits Actually, forward. Wait, I'm gonna use both uses of it. That'll bump my AC up to a plus four. Hold on, let me read the ability. <laughs> That's what it says, I can use it twice per long rest. Dude, if I feel you hit by you're going to bonus the target AC. I can use it, right? Attack, potentially causing it to miss. You use a reaction a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. <laughs> uh, so, so technically, no. <laughs> uh, it is using your reaction, uh, which means you can use your. Uh, you would be able to use it twice before it's gone. Uh, Wait, what? Get... so it doesn't actually add anything to my AC. Does that make her re-roll it? Because it says potentially it making it miss. You can use your reaction. No. Uh, so it's it's much like the parry ability that uh, monsters get. They add a bonus to their armor class, which could potentially make the attack miss. So, for example, if you were a 14 armor class and she rolled a she rolled her 15 and then you added the two, it would make it a 16, which would cause the attack to miss. You only get one reaction per turn, I'm afraid. However, well, then shield spell. If Sabine is fine, I will let you expend both charges to give you a temporary plus four to your armor class this turn. I don't mind. Then describe how your wings protect you, Sildur. It is much like in battle when hard metal of the same hardness strikes each other. There are these sparks that come off because you can't deal damage to the a hardness of your of the same hard like the blade of the same hardness and so these sparks would come off where as the um rapier gets through the wings but in between these these you know tendrilled ends of the wings it would catch it and cr and the blade would be inches from Sildaril's body And how does Sabine react to seeing these wings manifest and guard Sildaru? They look like dragon wings. Like they are, they are spectral at first, but when they solidified, they are straight up dragon wings just coming out of her back. Gold dragon wings. She would on its beauty for a second and then go back to a fighting pose. She's like, oh, I see you have more tricks than just your sword. These are not tricks. These are gifts. And they are beautiful. Angark. It's Eldoro. The narrow of her eyes. She would swing. The wings would, would part backward as she swings down, and they would dissipate into her back. Let's see it. Sabine's down. Non-lethal, by the way. <laughs> Just gotta make sure. She's dead. You kill no, no, her no, no, instantly. No, no, no. <laughs> kill her. Kill her. Kill her. 
Sabine, Sabine uh, no. thank you for being part of this campaign. Heads it's rolling been on a the pleasure. Floor. We're in a fucking minute. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Uh, she just got arc done. <laughs> Ooh, but we proved that doesn't matter anymore. The art vulner invulnerability is our one. Sabine, uh, I didn't mean it. Describe your final strike. Sabine, please. I didn't mean it. <laughs> when you go to heaven, let tell them it was not intentional. <laughs> Me, please. And if it's hell, don't say my name. Yeah, don't, don't, don't bring me up at all. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, Elle's wings would part as they flay back into her, um, her body, almost like pushing her forward. Um, as she will bring it down on, uh. Sabine's, um, you know, shield edge, and she will push her to the floor, almost uh, in a like a forceful way that deals damage because she's using her own shield <laughs> to push down on her on her chest, and it will be almost like she's mounting her atop. <laughs> oh, you, you hear. Sort of that adrenaline pumping, right? The beating of your heart She's in your panting. chest. <laughs> There's a moment where that that heavy breathing, sort of looming over Sabine, sort of fades away into the uh, uproarious sort of cry of the the prisoners and even some of the enforcers who are clapping, cheering, sort of very much enjoying this entire spectacle that's been laid before them. This performance they weren't. Uh, expecting yet loved the entire time. You would see the Lord Thorsten sort of collapse back into his chair, this visible wash of relief that takes his features as he sort of brings a hand up and smooths his hair back, uh, the sort of uh, matted stuck to his forehead because of all of the sweat that is built up there. But oh, the moment, you're lost. <laughs> the moment that you succeed is the moment he's like, yes, sir. <laughs> we just quickly fall over. Ah, oh, no, I lost, really. <laughs> I join her. <laughs> Lord Hain, heavy applaud, just the clap of heavy hands as he pushes himself up to stand. And the winner, the ward of House Ashford. Go ahead and take your rest, Sildurian. She would reach down to help Sabina. What is the robe figure doing during this time? The arms are laced uh, sort of within their sleeves and they are very quiet, unmoving, just sort of watching. Sabine would stand and face Lord Hain because he did not give direction for her to sit. Give Sildaril a fist over the chest like good fight. Breathing haggardly as she's looking ahead, waiting for her direction. He watches you for a moment. Sort of chin upwards. Expecting the similar gesture he had gotten in the past. <laughs> but seeing as you don't, there's a very subtle... Uh, sort of sneer that crosses his lips as he gives you a nod and gestures with his head towards the ble the uh, the seating, the benches. She would take a bow and go back to the benches. Very well fought, both of you. I found it quite enjoyable. Uh, I was going to say, is it possible for us to roll the clock back? I didn't want to interrupt the actual fight. But like during the fight. That was about mm -hmm. 
24. Do we get no heal for fighting or are we just bleeding? <laughs> yeah, sorry, our robe figure's AFK. You're just going to have to bleed out. The the robe figure doesn't immediately react is the problem. So as both of you are sort of limping out, Lord Hain uh, sort of pauses and looks to his left, seeing the robed figure who's just unmoving. And he sort of <clears throat> like grunts. And the figure turns their attention as if drawn from thought, looking now to both of the combatants, hands pulling free, magic beginning to weave. You would feel the very intense heat as you're walking, as wounds are being mended, your flesh being stitched together. <laughs> she would give out short gasps as, uh, what the fuck? <clears throat> Their muscles sort of spasming, not of their own accord. And then uh, almost as if uh, like a, okay, I'm done. Like, I, I, you know, I'm not going to do this as a kindness. You literally interrupted me. Sort of shoves their hands mm -hmm. back together and uh, resumes their very turned away expression. Now, you'd have had maybe about a minute or so. That's how long the combat lasted. Uh, before we get into the discussion with Torug, we're going to take a 15 minute break. 15 minutes? <laughs> Good fight. I like New that. York was fun. City. All right, now point down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. Uh, and uh, when we come back, I'm going to adjust your guys' tokens. Oh, do you have like a what? bloodied version? The beat up. Uh, you'll see, and I think you'll like it. Oh no. <laughs> oh dear. We've been made. Everybody pull out. Pull out. I never pull Checked. out. You never pull out. So, uh, that explains <laughs> everything. That explains a lot. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? Wait a explain. minute. You're pulled out. <laughs> what so does that weird. mean? <laughs> Wait a minute. What do you mean it's weak? It's hilarious that he doesn't oh, yeah, get it. You always pull out. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Wait. Don't worry Why about you? it. Why are you pulling out? Hello? No, oh, oh, Monka? <laughs> <laughs> That's so wasteful. Don't do that. <laughs> That's ah. insulting. Ah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Super glad the DM's not here to interrupt us with that. <laughs> Chaos. Great time, which means it's great time. <laughs> Chaos is a dumpster. Mm. Wow. Anybody with deficiency on pulling out, is help it, me out over here. Is it a dumpster? Is it the dumpster behind the Waffle House? There are 14 oh, of rolls involved. Oh, God. <laughs> Chaos. Oh, is Lord, a dumpster. They... <laughs> I could take 14 werewolves in a fight, right? In a fight, right? Oh my god. Oh my hey, god. what? <laughs> I have to pee. I'll be burnt. Hey. Right. Right. Relieve your bladder. Right. These chlamydia manacles cramp in my style. Be seeing you. Oh, sorry, you can't have your fucking overpowered smites, you charlatan. No. My dirty dude. Dirty, actually, dirty actually dude. I was gonna use shield of faith. It's also dirty. Imagine crit fishing against your own party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's fun. Let's go. Yeah. I returned. <laughs> Nothing to see here, officer. Quick, put him back, loser. Put the degeneracy away. Quick, hide the degeneracy. You must not know. Oh. Uh, I suppose that's fair. Uh... Where is it? Yeah, quick, put it back in. We don't pull out here in this channel. What? 
Don't worry about uh, it. Don't worry about the it. The saga continues. <laughs> if you motherfuckers get my Twitch banned, I will take your mm-hmm. knees. Chaos oh, is a dumpster. I'd like to point out that I had no part in this. He has no knees. You fucking liar. <laughs> I had no part in this <laughs> sordid affair. Mm. Okay. Let me ask oh, Chad. Look, is, oh, look, hey, the Venezuelan lying again. Imagine that. Wow. All right. We're just, we're just talking about Waffle House. <laughs> yeah. And dumpsters. Maybe See? <laughs> Chat's on my side. Tristan's a liar. And mm. Sizzle can't be trusted. Like, that's it. That's all you need to know. What do you mean I can't be trusted? You can't be trusted. <laughs> that's what with I mean. What? With anything. With opinions. Why? Oh. But so you're, you're having opinions, opinions are privileges are re- Your are opinions are worthless. Why couldn't you trust me with them? This is going places. <laughs> Death. Hello? Hello. Oh, he returns. Fuck. Yes. While you were gone, we held a committee and, and uh, we found out that in, ca- in fact you are a liar, so it's cool. Me? I had nothing to do with the whole pullout shit. No, they're talking about me, man. All right. Uh, <laughs> Marana, <laughs> which art would oh. you like to use? Ooh, your, art. your current one that is set as the reactive image or the one that you uh, you recently posted? Reaction shit. Um. I mean, if you could use the one that I posted, that would be super nice. I know I didn't get a transparent version of it, so I'm real sad. Big change. I paid money dollars for. Yeah. Oh, I just find that just clicked for me. By the way, Karen, the fucking Sildarel is uh, is the incarnation in this game of uh, Susano from Final Fantasy. Rejoice in the glory of combat. <laughs> what? Why do you say it like that? What? You do a fucking Susano voice, then you XLR having <laughs> All right. This is getting Rude. real, huh? Rude. <laughs> wow. Have your fancy toys. And I can't do the sh- echoey, shouty thing that, that he does, which is pretty cool. Don't worry, you soon will. You just come into my room. I'll have hijacked it from him. And you lose your voice. We go. Just hold him down while we steal the XLR for about two seconds. Take his breath. I'll, I'll just wait until it's like 3 p.m. He's asleep. 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. No, it is. Uh, I feel like that was some it's shade time. being thrown, but I can't it's quite time. identify. Uh, it, it absolutely is. was. I went to bed at 8 p.m. and woke up early. I took a nap. Oh, the same shit on you do. We both went I'm to bed sorry, like you... at, at super boomer hours. We were both in bed by like. You nine. should be sorry, like, you oh. fuck. Just, no, 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 no. Just because you've had like a decent schedule for like three fucking days doesn't mean you didn't have a shit one for like two years straight. All right. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry that I worked at a shitty job. Like that's somehow my fault. He worked nights too, so. It still continued afterwards. Imagine sleep shaming. Is that a thing? It is now. You did it. I'm diagnosed insomniac, so I have no shame about my sleep schedule being Garbo. In the end, how am I going to shame him then? Any way you want, dude. I don't know. You gotta leave me something, sis. How am I gonna give Caleb shit? I gotta keep him down here. I can't let his fucking head inflate Mm -hmm. to places I can't reach. Really? <laughs> it's only because well, you uh, you short, opened because you're short and bald. It's fine. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, that's, that. you yeah, that's the that's the point. Oh, see, you say these things, then you get mad when we call you short and bald. I have I've never gotten mad when you call me short or bald. Mm-hmm. 
I call myself those things. Alaric is indeed a short king. No. Standing at about no four more. six. <laughs> uh, that's a mistake. That is untrue. Hairline receding to that of a widow's peak. Molding uh, intensely. He's becoming a gnome before my very eyes. Oh, sorry. You're Hairline's right. Without your shoes. Uh, four five. My apologies. <laughs> my God. Oh, we don't want to be disingenuous the... here on this sh- all right, the stream. All right, all right, all right. The, the joke is over. I was called a short king. It's not funny anymore. All right. <laughs> Like, take back what you said. It ain't. Take back what? Take back what you said. I said like eleven things at your expense. Take them all back. So you go. <laughs> I said eleven I things uh, at your. Take them all back. I can't take them all back. Fine, clip it then, please. Meet clip me it, halfway. You Jack, can't clip, it, clip bro. what somebody says in the chat. That's not how it works. What? Look. I can just copy paste. Look. What do you want I'm from glad me? you're fixing your slip schedule. How about that? Mm. It's just like two people gaslighting each other as a conversation. <laughs> like bait <laughs> me. Now tell these people that I'm not a fucking short king, please. <laughs> <laughs> Quit pro quo. Come on. Have you guys ever seen uh, like chihuahuas when they try to like Son act real bitch. big? God damn it. When you're walking <laughs> by the fence. You fucking traitor, I mean, you gave me your word. You know, like when we go to my mom's house. Oh, I gave like, you no word to keep. You go to like oh, my mom's house you know and she's got that little fucking chihuahua because I don't know why she still has that <laughs> damn thing. And it's just like, rrr, rrr, rrr. I'm just like, you're not impressing anyone, dude. You need to chill. <laughs> I'm impressing myself. Yeah, not even that. Because meanwhile, the corgis over there just like, I'm a fat piece of shit, and uh, I don't care what you have to say, little dog. They're calling me a fucking purse, Caleb. <laughs> Stop it. Hey, I said nothing what? this time. Where did the purse thing come purse from? Purse material. <laughs> They're basically <laughs> saying, they are. <laughs> saying I'm a Take it back, then, help, and I'll take it back. Take, what? Okay. take it back, and I'll uh, take it back. Right, but you can't take anything back because you put the information out there. You gotta restitute the information I'll with a clarification. It. Absolutely, you fix it? take back what you said. Apologize about your shitty sleep schedule. About or... everything you've said. About yeah, take it all back. No. Everything is taken back. I should fly you both to China for competitive gaslighting. It's not a sport. It should be not sufficient enough. What? Try again. I fucking fuck up Try again. Son of a bitch. <laughs> what? Try what? What? Try Am again. I supposed to take back shit from weeks ago now? Like absolutely. This is fucking sore. Sam oh, better like at PvP of... than you. This is black. Dude, Sam this better at PvP than you. <laughs> That's just straight up fabrication. That's some fantasy <laughs> shit, right there. Sam <laughs> better at <laughs> PvP than you. Sam better at PvP than you. I'll take it back. Jesus Christ! Don't be lying. It's it's just. It's made up. Mm, then it looks like my truth stays. No, he is like purse sized. I'll get you See, an appropriate you, image chat when everything's done. <laughs> I pay that first slice, right? And then he wants another cut. And this never fucking ends. I can't wait to get to Iowa and put him in my little carrier bag and walk him around. <laughs> my plates have been rendered as thunder. <laughs> Competitive oh gaslighting. Uh, we need to figure out how to point score that. I mean, <laughs> it does defeat defeat only admitted when you begin to believe what you're being told, or like? Oh my god, you guys! <laughs> end of the day, he was right all along. I really am a shit person because he said so. <laughs> I really don't have any friends, and nobody likes me. Fucking tell him, Caleb. Hmm? Tell him what? Tell him your height. Lying about what? Tell him my real height and how hairy my head is. I have seen no pictures. I can't corroborate anything. Yeah, I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. I've already said all the information I have. I'm not a fucking chihuahua. Anyway, <clears throat> how's everybody doing tonight? Shitty, but <laughs> shitty friends. Hey, DM, could you put that in uh, Discord so I could put it in my OC notes? 
Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks, bud. Oh my god. I have no allies here. <laughs> you have me. Take by what you said. I'm always on your side. I'm trying to liberate you from Venezuela. I already took it back. Tristan, you just said you had no proof. You're not on my side. I just mean I don't have any proof. I can't lie. Take it back. What the fuck are you, a lawyer? Take it back. I was thinking about it, but I don't hate myself. Compliment my sleep schedule. I already did. That was the first thing I did. Compliment my sleep schedule. Yeah, I said I was happy that you were finally fixing your sleep schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but say it again. Admit, admit that dwarves and spears go together. Ooh, there we go. There we, there go. we go. Oh, no. He left. <laughs> you fucking... He sprinted from the conversation. He sprinted, but he only has 25 feet of movement. He fled, he fled faster than an elf from a dwarf with an axe. I mean, what? Oh this this motherfucker spent most of the morning filling up my goddamn meme channel it was great. with discussions about how dwarves I shouldn't use it. spears. It was fantastic. And then he posted a picture of a dwarf with spears in the background. He was like, that's dwarves. really cool. And I'm like, that's the Hobbit. <laughs> it was funny. It was good shit. Yeah, if people talk about like Shadowversity and Skologram, then somehow the dwarves versus elves versus dwarves with spears. I don't know. It was going places, dude. Well, at this point, right, a line's been... Like, the trenches have been dug. He can't yeah. admit it at this point because the war, right, the attrition, the casualties lost just doesn't That's justify just, surrender. The sunk cost fallacy in the, in the <laughs> fantasy verse right. of it's fucking powder keg. The powder the, keg has been set off. There's no yeah. stopping. Yeah, we've, we've put too much into this to give up now. He physically yeah. cannot yeah. admit it at this point. <laughs> it would hurt him. It would. It would. Deal psychic damage. Exactly. Like going back on an oath. Be, I get your ass be... back in here. You <laughs> fucking little tiny shih tzu. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know if you're going to convince him with that. You might have to roll charisma. Oh my god. We escalated? Yep. That's an escalation. <laughs> We're doing some escalating. Oh, here. he's holding he's holding the D D campaign hostage until his ego is returned to him. Mm. Alright, well pretty pillow. Alaric is subsequently slaughtered by Lord Hain. Damn. We I mean, tried that already, it didn't really work out last time, so I'm not sure if that's effective. Ooh. Of the DM. Three natural oh. 20s in a row. Uh, I, like, <laughs> I saw it. Oh, look, I rolled. It clearly... <laughs> Ooh, would you look at that? He attacks. Damn. Alaric puts his hands down. He says, you're right. I am <laughs> short, Lord Hain. <laughs> the blade catches him in the neck. There's the arterial spray of blood. Gurgling wetly, he is unable to defend himself as Lord Hain brings I'm, the blade high again. You're I'm putting this in my head. head from his molding shoulders. Striking him down... The final is the reverse grip of the blade, a murder stroke, directly into his neck, ending his life. That's a shame. Lord Hain says, long live tall kings, bitch. <laughs> I would really like that character, too. I hope I hope Sirik's next character is also an elf. Dude, oh, you shit, ooh. what? You sure you, you want that, brother? <laughs> yeah, I, I, you don't want that. Like, I've seen the pictures, bro. It's fine. I've heard the stories. It's nothing you want a piece of. Ooh. You'd have hit me harder had you said my mom. And even then, that's not really... That's not a, that's not a place he wants to go. Yeah. What's the matter, coward? <laughs> Do it, bitch. What's the matter, coward? Pussy! God. Have you been to the Cloud Top District? Of course not. What's the matter, coward? <laughs> Please, for the love of God. How much longer do you need to load, actually? <laughs> We're waiting for him to come back. <laughs> oh, is, uh, oh is Momo back? Indeed. Okay. Dude, moms are not allowed. What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry. 
Sorry, Sparks. <clears throat> Moms are not Goodbye. allowed. <laughs> Get out. Mom's out. dare you have, you know, how dare you have reproduced in this world? No, Ooh. in the shit talking, moms are not allowed. Oh. You should talk to my mom if you want. She'll kick your ass. I don't need to do anything. Well, that's another reason not to shit talk your mom. I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> well, correct. She would, well, wise, a wise His mom man. would absolutely beat your Vincent, ass. Vincent, Vincent, yeah. thank, thank the sub. Thank, thank the, the sub. sub. What? Now. Thank you. You what got happened? a sub, bro. You got a tier three gift sub, bro. Look at that. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Doppelganger, thank you so much for gifting uh, a sub to your mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very kind of you, Doppelganger. I appreciate that. Bro, <laughs> clip it. <laughs> Moms everywhere rejoice. Damn, your mom must be stuffed to like all the channels. <laughs> Is it just that? Then I have to adjust Marano's image. Nice. I'm sorry. You should be. <gasps> oh, dear. Perfect. <laughs> and now. Everybody's back. What do you all wish to discuss with Torag? Uh, are you doing the mind mind screwery, or are we vocalizing our our opinions? <laughs> you know, not that Yuria would know, but I feel like I'm about to get punished for using telepathy all over the place. But it's like the only it's like the only tool in your kit that you can use right now, so And yet And yet However We've already started down this road, so yes, she shall speak to Torug through the mind as the combat happens. When she would have relented for a moment, but when Silaril uh her her wings uh, exposed, uh, Yuria would gently ease back into Torig's mind. How could something as beautiful as that ever join something as despicable as Hain? We're not your enemy. And then she would wait for the crowd to die down. Torig has a, again, like looking at him, he has been in this arena uh, for probably most of his time, right? The last three days have been him in the arena and you can see just the wear and tear. Like his entire right eye is closed from a deep bruise that is sort of keeping it shut. Uh, the healing only seems to be enough to keep him stable, not actually working at reversing the damage. Mm -hmm. he so sort of at a disadvantage then basically indeed he sort of turns to look at all of you seeing all of you dressed differently sort of grimaces for a moment Yuri would be mostly side eyeing him at this point in a way that looking at him without looking like she's looking at him to the best of her ability We don't plan on taking Hain's offer. He wants us to join an order. Something owns Hain. Something called the Iron Duke. And with that, her eyes flick to the robed figure. Ooh. Roll me. Roll me a 
Ooh, where's my wisdom saving throw? Let me press the button. Hold on, let me uh, refresh. Boundary, I don't know why it's not in the roll. You have to go through that weird way of doing it. You can't just click on the saving throws. It's yeah, still you to, busted. Yeah, you, have, you have to click the wisdom score and then select saving throw. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I still don't have a fix for that. So. Oh. It was highlighting, so I thought, okay, right, well, let me hit wisdom and uh, the saving throw. Okay, then. You, uh, as you sort of flick your attention up, you would see that the the hooded figure, whose attention has otherwise been elsewhere, the moment you say Iron Duke is the moment that their eyes are fixated on you. <laughs> they hold it for several long beats. Nothing comes of it, though. You saved. So the encroaching feeling begins to dissipate before they turn their attention back. Uh, she would, there'd be a visible pause while she looks and then looks away when he locks, sort of side-eyeing him. And then she relaxes as his attention turns and then he, she resumes. Sorry. I wouldn't use that name, but I had to say it so you would know. It seems it catches certain people's gazes. So, be wary of that title. It seems the fight is ending, so I shall make this brief. We have a way of getting you out. But in order for our allies on the outside to reach you, you need to be in the Bastille. Roll me a persuasion check. Get that out of here. <gasps> Itis, if you would be as kind as to get rid of that miscreant. I can't bend him. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. I don't have sword. Would you like sword? Yes. All right. Thank you, Itis. 17. The attention of Torug on the fight as it finishes, sort of sitting forward, as if attempting to pay attention to it and not the conversation being forced upon him. He finally relents, a heavy sigh. He turns his entire head to look at all of you. Seeing that turn, Kellen finally catches his eye and gives him like a, a nod and taps his fist to his chest twice. Assuming that the conversation was happening, he doesn't actually know what was said, but assumes that he's looking for some kind of affirmation or confirmation. Yuria would be staring straight ahead, but side-eyeing him with her fingers interlaced. That, <laughs> that almost Palpatine look. <laughs> Unlimited power. <laughs> his, his right eye forced closed still from the bruising, his left eye sort of searching each person individually, starting with Alaric, inspecting him from head to toe. Marana. You. Kellen. Alaric isn't even paying attention to him, by the way, he's watching the fight. Doesn't stop him from looking at you. And finally, the two that come in uh, after their bout is finished. Silver's expression is you know, unaware that they were talking. She's just, she's sitting on the bench, just kind of like panting, just this hatred, right? It returns to her eyes as she's looking in the direction of uh, up here. So it could have been perceived as she's looking at Lord Hain, but it is just like this de dejected, 
sting, right? If she had daggers, she'd shoot him out of these pupils of hers. Is it at Lord Hain or Lord Torsten? Torsten. Understood. But it is like her face doesn't reflect that, only her eyes. <laughs> Understood. The seething that is there. Obviously, though he does not look, there is that reaction from this figure who's sort of bringing a handkerchief up to wipe at his forehead and brow, just staring now at the empty arena where blood has been shed. And if all of you look, your tokens have been updated, courtesy of Momo. Yes. We're pretty. Yeah, but I applause. We are very pretty now. Slash me applauds. You're pretty. Oh, You're banned. Pretty. <laughs> Torug waits for a moment as Lord Haynes stands up, sort of shooting his attention to the rest of you. Now then, with such enjoyment out of the way, which of you wishes to go next? Before any of you get the chance, Alaric, you would recognize the rather portly individual here on the charges of murder. Extend his hand up. You cut out for me when you said that, by the way. But portly individual. The portly individual here on the charges of murder has raised his hand to offer himself and the fight and very quickly points the hand down to you. Well, he need not even point up. He immediately gets up, Elric, as he sees him and recognizes him. That was an option? <laughs> Excuse me? Ooh, could have fought, <laughs> could have fought Torstein this whole time. Feels bad. <laughs> Seeing that, Silver kind of steps forward, like, um, <laughs> and she like would like lean off the the chair. <laughs> Lord Hain, looking to the portly man, gives a nod <laughs> and then looks to Alaric, that grin forming again until he sees you sit forward <laughs> and sort of move to stand, Silver, and he knits his brows together. You had your bout. <laughs> I'll think of course, the, my the, lord. The portly one wasn't Torsten, right? It was another prisoner, right? It was it was the prisoner that beat the shit out of Alaric. Okay, yeah, well, I thought it was. Oh, yeah. I thought you said it was Torsten. No, okay. no, no, no. Sorry, it was the that the was... portly individual here on the charges of murder, <laughs> the one that was like, "Hey, you're in our spot," and attempted to usurp the crystal from Alaric. Oh, okay. For some reason, I thought he said Torsten. I was like, that, that was an option. <laughs> No, Torsten looks like he has absolutely no desire to fight. <laughs> okay, never mind. I on that. <laughs> well, without breaking eye contact, uh, Alaric leans forward and savagely spits on the ground in front of him. And then he'll step over the bench and head down. Show him what's full. Hmm? You got this, Alaric. His color, it stifles all his spells still, yeah? One more time. He cannot use any of his spells while he wears the color, right? Correct. The... The man sort of grinning as he turns to look back at Lord Hain. Hand axes. The, the portly man gives a nod. He, Lord Haynes steps up and grabs a set of hand axes and tosses them into the arena. And what will it be for you, Crovy? Uh, <laughs> Alaric turns his grin up from the portly man, his many facial trouts and faded scars writhing in the low light. Ahamir. 
that grin on his face grows even wider. So he gives a nod. And you can see that uh, compared to like the other weapons, there's the maul that you had been given previously, still caked in blood as he sort of overhand tosses it. It's swinging through the air and landing on the head with this final crack. Sitting back How into close. his chair, he grins. It would have, uh, it would have, you moved initially, so it was going to be where you weren't standing. <laughs> so when you were stood here, he'd have thrown it and it'd have landed on its head over here. Holy shit, my man. Damn, he fucking my kind of strange. Oh my god. He sort of sits Yo, back. Yo, what kind of belt he wearing? <laughs> you can't see from here, I'm afraid. <laughs> That bitch got a giant belt? I know he does. <laughs> Show me. The portly individual sort of grinning, dragging the length of the axe heads against each other. He sort of looks at you. Now, this ain't anything personal, right? Just a fight was taken from me. And I heard you're plenty fucking strong. Alaric kicks the side of the hammer's head and catches its handle by the base, bringing it to his shoulder. I understand you have an itch. So do I. Let us scratch it together. You would see as he sort of grins, dragging his tongue across the length of his teeth. Uh, he sort of slaps the two uh, heads of the axis together, sort of igniting small sparks. It's combat. Is it? Sounds like romance. <laughs> well, actually, do the cat. Combat, maybe. <laughs> They're licking if lips. If you grew up in Kagarina, it's a, uh, it's a, <clears throat> what? <clears throat> did it? It did it again. <laughs> it really oh, is. Oh, I startled my cat. Oh no. <laughs> you will pay the blood price. <sighs> I'm gonna beat I this will. thing up. Uh, looks like it's doing a number on you, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was me the whole time. <laughs> it's just, I, I like, I already know what the fix has to be. And it's <laughs> it's a third monitor, which is really dumb. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll give you one when you get here. Why would you... That's the move-in present. You get a monitor! You get... <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to juggle between OBS, Foundry, and then my browser Foundry. So Ghost. And what happens is when I'm in Foundry too long, it snoozes my ghost and takes it so it's like, oh, we're not processing anything in this this tab anymore. Good night. Oof. It's Yikes. really fucking annoying. <laughs> but Shout. with that, let's pop that out. Ooh, I see that. Let me go ahead and let me change up the music. Do you have a preference, good sir? <laughs> Me? Would you prefer Domina? That soundtrack? Or? <laughs> Do you ever upload that song I pass you? Which one? Let me see if I can find it. Oh, here it is. Betting it all, my boy. All right. He has no spells. He's gonna get fucked. Stop it. Hey, I am betting against you. So you can <laughs> there's a, there's betting going on. Oh my god. <laughs> so we win anyway. I get it. Sizzle, my man out there. <laughs> I got you, homie. Oh my lord. Throw the fight, brother. It's like every wrestling like story. Ever. Ooh. Uh. Give me a moment. I can probably swing this. Give me... What do you mean? A second, and I can get the music Ooh. started for you. Is it... I have a question. What's your question? Does this healing, this uh, robed figure does, um, does it produce scars or no? No. Okay. It's just It just hurts a lot. I hate it. Gross. Necromancy. Mm -hmm. Fake and dumb. No, oh, guilt, it just hits. Uh, I could, okay. All right. Real quick intermission, because I have to download this song. 
Oh no. Shouldn't All right, take guys. More than a few moments. I need, I need more of you guys to vote for Cyric, so when he loses, I get more of a payout. Okay. Oh, I need that. <laughs> oh, this is getting good. You actually don't get more. You just get double what you get. Damn it. What you put in. Bro. <laughs> this isn't like the fucking horse tracks. That's, well, you know, Three I'm not dollars. normally a gambling man, but what can they say? How, what, y'all voting against? Damn. Yeah, guys. What the fuck? Come on. <laughs> the chat has turned. I did, turned. It, from <laughs> I did it as a joke, bro. Hey, what can I say? I'm very charismatic. No. You're just that guy. You're that guy in the like in the group that's like, oh, are we all doing this? Yeah, well, I don't want to. <laughs> like, oh no. yeah, we all love cake. You're like, you know what? Cake's not so good, you know? It's not. That's exactly you. <laughs> I like ice cream cake. What the fuck? Oh my god, here we go. The ice cream's better. So it begins. <laughs> Roll initiative, Alan. Sorry. Sorry for the delay. Gave in his skull. Get in. Even with a really high initiative from the prisoner, you go first. Oh, that music. Bloody, bloody. <laughs> bloody. All right. The way Alaric goes about this is he doesn't simply charge forward. Intent, baby. Oh, did I just see? Sorry. F <laughs> yeah, yeah, we heard it. It's okay, so charge forward. <laughs> right, so in one quick sprinting motion, all of Alaric just surges ahead. It's not simply that he is faster, but rather he is angry. And that snap of movement, a hail of sand, not sand, I guess. Would it be sand, or would it be more like gravel, right? What's beneath the... Uh, it is, like, there's sort of loose, broken, uh, not cobble, but, like, this this tile and flooring has been so worn down that there is, like, loose stone and pebbles that you would run through. Right. Hail of that. Kicking up in the air. As he charges ahead. And rather than crash into the man itself, he rushes by and with the hammer sweepingly aims for his center map. Let's see it. Seventeen absolutely hits. This resounding crack. What does it look like when Alaric connects? Hot Hall is the man? Uh, this man's like about 6'1 or so. So they match each other. All right. When the hammer connects with him, it is as though it was entirely part of Alaric's plan because if it hadn't, the momentum, would, the momentum would have carried him ahead. So with the crashing of the hammer to his chest, with that connection against the plates of his ribs, Alaric himself is brought to a halt, and he himself crashes into the handle of the hammer, stopping in his track. You would feel as something gives, those false ribs breaking from the weight of the maul. That resounding crack and snap muffled just by the person's body. You would hear the <clears throat> forced as you force their diaphragm upwards. But just as quickly as it's there, you would watch as their head sort of slumps and snaps upwards, that murderous intent in their eyes. What else are you doing on your turn? I'm going to use my extra five feet of movement to uh, move up. Understood. It's the prisoner's turn. He's going to make he's gonna... two attacks. 
with his hand axes. The first one is a 21 hit. It Catching across the length of your chest, this hand axe almost attempting to sink into the crook of your neck, slashing down the front of your clothes, you are dealt six points of damage. With a flourish and a twist, sort of spinning the first axe, the other one coming up, as if attempting to use the first swinging one as a distraction, attempting to, uh, like a cross cut over your chest. The second one, a 21 to hit again, dealing four points of damage. Hit, hit. For a total of 10. <laughs> the front of your uh, loose fitting shirt sort of now uh, hanging open with these deep gashes across your front. He stays there. You watch as he sort of drags the length of the he the, uh, the heads of the axis together, brings one up, and then runs his tongue along the blood that is gathered there. Oh, that's not hot. That's not hot at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alaric is struck. His body swinging backwards beneath the weight of the two axes now embedding into it. His knees slightly give. His body anticipates the damage by slouching, by bracing, right? His teeth are bared in reaction, and his eyes, amber-like, are streaken wide open now, understanding the severity of the moment. And the pain. But he retaliated. With that same momentum of leaning away, of trying to turn the blow into something more glancing, the hammer oscillates with his arm that now arcing up brings down the hammer on his head. Let's see it. Let's see or so it attempts. <laughs> that hits. A resounding crack. Uh, he attempts to bring the hand axes up, but it is just not enough. Sort of the weight carrying through and forcing them down as you connect into him. You would hear the grunt and the sort of cracking of something else beneath the mole's head. He looks mortal, but still standing. Well, rather, forced to a knee, but he is beginning to push himself up. Are you doing anything else? I believe else that's my turn. turn. Understood. Pushing himself up. <sighs> Come on, boy. Make it interesting. <laughs> and he spits in your face. I need a constitution saving throw. <laughs> Gross. My man got a breath weapon. Holy shit. You take Don't one like point that. of nasty damage. Ooh, you are temporarily blinded as this globule of saliva and blood hits your face and spreads. Rivulets now dripping down your face. He sort of laughs, rears back, and cocks you in the face with a punch. You would roll at advantage because you are blinded. That is a 20 to hit, dealing three points of bludgeoning damage. It hit. That resounding crack out of nowhere, the darkness not availing where this man is, as you are struck suddenly, you feel your skull rattle. The weight of this punch hurts. Now, because you are temporarily blinded, you could attempt to clear it as your action, wiping the, uh, the blood away, or you can swing at a disadvantage. Alaric drops his hammer. In a fury at the indignance of being spat up, he barrels forward and attempts to, blind as he is, flail and get a punch at him however way he can. All right. Go ahead and make me that unarmed strike at disadvantage. A 12 hits. <laughs> Let's go! Oh, 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my God. I thought I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> that 12 hits. Oh. Your strike going wide. Describe how you hit him. Oh. Uh. Okay. Uh. Can I make it long and explanatory? Or do I make it just a normal blow? He's, he's still standing. He looks incredibly mortal, but it is a resounding <sighs> hit. It would have been like straight out of middle school. Alaric's arm flailing, haymakers aiming nowhere, just trying to fall at him until he can get a hit. And once he does, he it's glancing, but it's echolocating, telling him where he is, and then he surges up with a left hook and gets him in the gut. The the feeling, your strike landing and hitting that those solid cords of muscle and the fat that is there, but it's sort of striking inwards, bringing the whole of it in until you hear the audible gasp. The figure struggling to catch their breath now as you landed a square hit. Reeling back. Uh, I'll say you both move. Uh, what else are you doing on your turn? I cannot use bonus action to wipe off the spat. Uh, nope. It'd be, uh, thankfully, uh, after this turn, you won't be blinded anymore. Oh, well, you could say that he is just, you know, wiping at his eyes. Yeah. And that's my turn. All right. It's the man's turn. On him. Uh, he's going to make his two attacks against you. Sort of reeling from the punch, he staggers back and then catches himself, bringing the axe and an overhead strike. That's a 23 to hit. That's it six is. points as it catches along your shoulder, like cutting down the length of your chest as he brings his other one up. That is a 18 to hit. It hit. You're dealt eight points of damage. Ooh. Again, sort of uh, striking the uh, lengths of the, the heads of the axes against each other. There's the uh, very like gross laugh that comes from this man. That sort of uh, that rasp that's there at the back of his throat. Uh, he looks haggard and uh, on like on the verge of collapse, but now so do you. Alaric will abuse the fact that the axes are embedded. He disregards his hand. It's his hands. And flexing his outsized chest against these edges embedded in him, he charges forward and aims an elbow at his face. Let's see it. This will just be a normal roll, no disadvantage. May I use my inspiration to roll? <laughs> this is what it's for. Indeed. But you describe to me how you turn this failure into a success. Because a 13 hits and a 5 is more than enough to bring this man down. All right. Oh, I have a bunch of people here like missing. Okay. Alaric barrels into him once his elbow doesn't find purchase, and together they roll on the ground. But at this point, he's lost his hammer. The other man, he's lost his axis, and they're tangled in a loop. But Alaric comes out on top, and he punches, knees, snarls at the man while he's snarling back, struggling and straining, 
Alaric punches him again while he's underneath him and again smashed his nose to a red pole, got a hand around the half of his own axe and started chop, chop the dent in his chest, chop the great wound out of his face, hacked at him with his axe, hacked at him, hacked at him, snorting and spitting, bread ripping at his chest, muscles on fire, blood surging so hard in his skull, <laughs> he feels his eyes are going to pop out. So he essentially kills him after the struggle, after this tangle on the ground. There is a moment, that final strike, the wet gurgle of desperation from this portly man, this murderer, attempting to get out from underneath you. The weight that you bear down on this man, every strike, severing muscles, tendons, digging deeper and deeper, you remember the fight, if you could even call it that in the mine. The swinging of this man's pickaxe. And yet here you are, returning the favor. The axe is sinking deep into this man until there is no more fight. With a wet, final death throw, this man dies. Body going limp. Alaric de Karim, you are victorious. Man, I lost those channel points. Fuck. So Alaric is still on the ground, braced up against the body of this cadaver, and in order to help himself up, he takes a hole of the handle off the axe that's still embedded to his face, and with it, it doesn't simply rise, but rather he staggers. And the weight and the movement and the momentum of his wounded body slash, slouching up makes the, the edge of the axe rattle in his skull until it comes free with like a slippery, sickly gurgle. And then he's standing upright, the axe in his hand, tripping with the blood of the once portly, now murdered prisoner. Lord Torsten has an expression of that of seeing a ghost. Pale expression, sweat dripping down his features. But Lord Hain, Lord Hain looks on like a proud father. A sinister grin spread across his lips, revealing those sharpened canines once more as he sits and gives a nod, one of approval, one of acceptance. Is this a banister in front of Thorsten? Uh, yeah. Alaric, suddenly with an explosive sort of energy, takes a step forward and throws the hatchet right at the banister. <laughs> Aiming in Torsten's direction, but in reality, for the banister right in front of him. <laughs> Stepping forward, you throw. It's swirling through the air, cutting through it, spraying viscera as it does, until it lands with the audible thunk, cutting through wood, and cut right between where Torsten's uh, feet are apart. Jumping back, startled as he is, he looks aghast, and it's Lord Hain who laughs. In Tyros, there is only strength, and only the strong survive. Take your rest, Cruvine. You've earned it. A pain lights in Elric's head, and in his eyes, where once amusement belled, there's this hateful silence churning as he stares at Torsten and stares. And after a moment, he turns back around and very quietly, in spite of his bulk, slouches back to his seat. There'd have been that moment as you stared and 
Lord Hain referred to you by your name, Crovain. You'd have seen effectively a soul leave a man's body. As Lord Torsten realizes, he understands. And fear takes his expression. You are not escorted, but you are allowed to move back to your seat. Enforcers move their way into the arena and begin to discard of the body. The other prisoners, very pointedly, <laughs> looking at the party, start pushing themselves away. <laughs> now, during that... What would you all have been doing? Is there any further response or reaction from Torag, or...? Mm. There better not be. I mean, like, does he like, give a nod, or anything like that? He, he's only been looking at you guys. He doesn't seem as shut off as before, though. Although, you have no idea what conversation is being had, Kellen. I know. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Shifts to Kellen. I'm going to suggest out of hatred of the orc that you fight him. This will be his test. If he fights you, then he does not agree with us. If he forfeits, then it is to the Bastille. Either way, you need to fight him. We cannot have both you and him in the Bastille. Nod gently if you understand. He does nod, but remembering that I was right, that kind of got like retcon though with the whole silver old, like being told that she couldn't she already gone. She already had her fight, so hmm, maybe. But yeah, he'll nod and it's worth a shot, you know. So. Kellen turn or uh, excuse me. <clears throat> Uria shifts her mind to Tori. This will be your test. If you believe us, throw this fight. Enter the Bastille. There will be salvation for you. You will know. You will definitely know when the rescue comes. They are unmistakable. If you don't believe us, well, I pity Kellen. Now, given Torug's standing with the party, all of your interactions, everything the party has done thus far, either to aid or assist Torug, the DC required for this is lowered. What exactly? Sorry. This my is, brain couldn't comprehend that. That's <laughs> fine. The DC I am asking from Yuria is for her persuasion check. The DC has been lowered because of the party's standing. Torug's feelings towards the party have been determined by your actions, assisting him, talking to him, showing mm -hmm. your care and whatnot. Everything you have done up to this point. Yuria. Keep making me roll these persuasions. They're gonna hit a one. Roll me a persuasion check, please. I was just gonna say, is it possible <laughs> to assist? How are you assisting in a mind telepathy conversation? <laughs> well, I would see just like her kind of doing the back and forth. I would probably have heard her uh, whisper to Kellen. Oh, that was in the mind as well. Oh. Oh. She's doing all of this with her brain. There is okay. no talking to these people. If but you if would there like. Was ever a if there was ever a point where she like pointedly looked 
at like Torg or either back and forth that I could catch. Maybe Morana could um, potentially pass some of her polid food over. Of whatever strength you require there. And just whisper it under her breath. You are right next. Dish. And then just kind of like roll something over. That's that's the shot I have. Hmm. He doesn't. He doesn't appear interested in the food. His focus thus far has been on the party and judging your character, seeing if you are the same people that he had met no more than a week ago. Enough. Seeing that in his gaze, <laughs> there'd be a small smile. What better way to measure a man than to challenge him? Torog watches for a moment. And just as Lord Hain is beginning to stand, Torog stands. His focus forward. A silence sort of moving over the whole of the arena. You can see him now standing, beaten, haggard. A man who's barely holding on. You would see that there are fresh, deep scars that run along the length of his arms, along the length of his forearms, his hands. In his rough spun clothing that is cut and tattered, you would see the lashes that have adorned his back, some fresher than others. It appears that not only does he go to the Bastille, but wounds are dealt to him before he does, making the salt water a less enjoyable experience. He stands there for what seems like an eternity, but it's several long beats before he turns to Lord Hain. I challenge the Grey Watch. Lord Hain's brow raises. A curious tilt of his head as he looks to you, Kellen. Right. I'm surprised. Yeah, he raises his eyebrows and kind of like looks around a little bit, like, what the fuck, you know? Playing it up a little bit, a bit before he takes his breath in and stands up. If that's what you want, time to settle an old grudge. Lord Hain, sitting there for a moment, not acknowledging your statement, just watching Torug. Before looking to you, Kellen. And what is your reason for challenging the Grey Watch, Torug? Torug, sort of rolling his jaw. He walks with no honor. I've seen what he does in the mine. He's no different from the beasts that he fights. Ouch. <laughs> Fucking rude. Lord Haynes' brows rise. A genuine look of surprise on his face. Very well into the arena. I look forward to seeing this one. Torug grunts, walking past, and as if to really sell it, <laughs> spinning at your feet. Yuri uh, 
lazily rolls her head towards Kellen, saying aloud, Seems he doesn't like the clothes. There's a sick smile on her face. Enjoy yourself. <clears throat> um, sorry, for the um, Alaric wasn't healed, right? He's still wholly wounded. Again, yeah. It's a very similar situation to what happened with uh, Silderil and Sabine. So wait, we were healed? <clears throat> you okay. guys were healed. Uh, okay. But it, it appears that the, the, the mouth of the Iron Duke is like preoccupied with thought. Doesn't appear to really care in this moment of what's happening. And it isn't until Lord Torsten sort of mutters something, this sort of meek motion of like attempting to like get their attention, like uh, 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 that the mouth turns to look. And you would see that uh, Lord Torsten sort of retreats back into the chair, trying to make himself smaller. The gaze settled on you, Alaric. The hands pull from beneath the robes very suddenly, fingers curling inwards as uh, magic begins to form, weave now beginning to take place as your wounds are being sealed. It is not pleasant. It it have almost been better to have just let them heal naturally. Yeah, I was going to ask if I could roll a medicine check for him to self-tend. And that's how he would have gotten caught when look sort of ripping a loose part of his shirt, tying down wounds and tourniqueting others. Yeah, the healing almost feels like malicious. Damn. <laughs> yeah, but you are restored to full hit points. Torog turns to look at Lord Hain, who's already in the process of drawing up the large great axe. Tossing it forward, Torog catching it and sort of using the momentum to bring both hands to hold it before himself. This thing is drenched in blood. Lord Hain looks at you, Kellen. Go on then, Greywatch. State your weapon. Just to clarify something, other, Yuria said that Toreg was the one supposed to throw the fight? Correct. Okay, making sure I remembered that. Some reason I had to bring He who throws the fight goes to the Bastille. At least that is the general thought. Mm. Mm. Turning to look at Lord Hain and the uh, weapons rack and everything. Saber and short sword. Gives a nod, gesturing to Lord Torsten at his side, who gathers up, sort of searching for a moment, rummaging through, as if not really familiar with weapons all too much. Pulling up a short sword and a, a saber and sort of tossing them both. He'll, uh, scoop them up and like kind of give them some testing swings or like flicks to make sure that they're he's holding them right since i'm sure these aren't his weapons they're just similar right correct yeah so he's got to get used to these and then uh tucking both weapons under his arms using his fingers to is it a pullover tunic or a button-up uh it's like a pullover. Uh, uh, okay, well then he can't really put him under his arms. Uh, he holds him between his like his knees and then pulls his shirt off completely and tucks it, you know, in the back of his trousers so he's bare chested. And once recollecting the weapons in his hands, he the short sword he brings up in his left hand to his right clavicle and kind of draws a short line and blood down, just kind of cutting himself once shallowly. 
with it. You take 19 points of damage. Yeah, you yeah. die instantly. <laughs> you die of tetanus. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, drawing that blood and then the um, he kind of points it, the, the bloody short sword at Toreg, but it's what might be seen as kind of like a hey, I'm gonna fucking kill you move uh, facing not towards Lord Hain, but towards Toreg, since, you know, they're kind of side by side. He gives him a kind of like a, a wink with the eye that's not on this side. It's a, like more of a like it probably, I guess it would be it'd probably be super subtle, but in this case it's more of a like, hey, this is me you know, kind of offering the preamble to a blood oath or like a, you know, Hey, on my blood, this is you know this is legit. I'm I'm with you. Uh, a quick aside, mechanics wise, what are your feats that you took again? I have skilled feat and the fighting initiate feat. Okay, you're attempting to use a long sword and a short sword together. No, saber is like a rapier, but with slashing. Uh, okay, hold on, let me double check. Does the does it have, have the light property? Yes, it has the finesse property. The short sword is light. Okay, the, the reason I'm asking is because without the dual wielder feat, uh, you would need both weapons to be light to make attacks on one that's, hand and that, offhand. That's a different feat, this one. Because uh, if the... Uh, what? Ow. Your offhand Your has offhand. to be light. <laughs> Yeah, just the offhand has to be light. If I wanted to use two long swords, I'd need the dual wielding feet. The mm. offhand just has to be light. Let me clarify real quick. Hold on. Or rather, let me let me double check. I don't think rapiers are light though, right? I think the argument he... is that it's yeah, light, he... so it should be fine. Well. It's that would be your main hand weapon. The off hand would have to be light. Yeah, so a short sword. Oh, you're I certain get it, you can though. do that without dual wielding? Yeah, because dual wielding lets you use like two long swords or something, two weapons that aren't light to do that. That's the whole point of it. Yeah, that's how people get two rapiers with it. Or two long swords or two whatever. You just can't use like a heavy in each hand, for example. Okay. Well, I'll allow that for now. I'm going to I'm going to look after the game. Yeah, I do have the two weapon fighting style. That's the fighting initiate feat so I can have my uh, ability. I can have my my dex to the offhand. That's the whole point of that. So. Okay. Like I said, I'll allow it for now and then after the game I'll clarify. Okay. All right. It's combat. Did it roll initiative or? Absolutely. Okay. 16. It's getting see. really dramatic. Let's try some of these. I haven't played with these ones yet. All right. Combat start. Kellen, you're first. <clears throat> Not wanting to, like, offend him by going light on him. He gives each weapon a spin in his hands and moves on the balls of his feet in sort of... Uh, You'd probably, it, it would probably seem mo much like with Sildaril and, and Sabine, the kind of dancing thing, but it's less intended for show and more intended for practicality and movement. So when he moves forward, he's crouched low and then cuts up with the saber first. And this is, people who are watching might notice that this is sort of a, interesting take on a, a very elvish sword style that has been turned into a less flashy thing into a more rudimentary 
not quite savage, but there is a definite, like, hey, this isn't meant for show, this is meant to heck and kill someone. Yeah, let's roll my first attack. Let's see it. <laughs> 11. Rolls. 11 does not hit, I'm afraid. Yeah. You would watch as he sort of brings the the head of the great axe up, catching the saber in like the where the uh, the head sort of connects into the hole of the shaft, and sort of catching it there, just staring at you. Okay, um, with the staring. Um and this offhand comes down and um, using the, and it's, it's not a, a savage cut like the first one. This one is using the flat and slapping it, tries to slap it against his ribs. Let's see it. Twenty definitely hits. Instead of piercing, it'd be more like a bludgeoning, but yeah. It's a smack, a hearty smack. Still hits the sort of resounding crack. His body barely flinching, though. Go ahead and move your token appropriately, by the way. Placement matters. Yes. Oh, the... and with that, he skirts sideways after the last attack. Sort of striking the body, barely reacting. The orc as a whole sort of uh, containing that uh, outburst, if there was to be any. And you can see him sort of grit his teeth. Looking to you, he says, Make it believable. I'm trying. I believe that's your turn. He's going to go into a rage. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Make it believable, because I'm about to. <laughs> about to and with his up. great axe, you watch as he spins it once, catching it and bringing it in an overhead swing. He's going to make a reckless attack. Oh, no. Ah. So that could come into... That could come into your advantage. Could. Maybe. Potentially. Maybe not. So what reckless does... Oh, my goodness. Whoa! It uh, unleashes sin. <laughs> what Reckless does is it grants him advantage. However, all melee attacks against him have advantage as well until the start of its next turn. So he's going to swing at you with his great axe. That is a 25 to hit. Jesus. You are dealt eight points of damage. Wrenching across the length of your chest. There's this sort of, as he's swinging, catching it with one hand and the other hand coming up to like open palm connect into the wound. Uh, not dealing any damage, at least intentionally, but like showing you this like, come on! That's his turn. Nice. Yeah, well, that hit is not pleasant, but uh, with it, he uh, tries to get out of the grip, you know, playing into the, the whole uh, wrestling, you know, professional wrestling style uh, rivalry or whatever. Um, <laughs> like, you know, pushes his hand away and then does a roll to get behind him or to his side, since I guess he would move yeah, to his side, and then um, does a spinning slash with the saber as he moves. So I would go with which saber? Which saber? You have advantage on both of your attack swings. However, he is raging, so it'll be half damage. Good, because that's a natural 20. <laughs> Good shit. So, that's a 16, so 8. Indeed, reduced to 8. 8, and then 
spinning again, um, moves, to, moves to the back end, and then he reverse grips the short sword and stabs it behind him, aiming for above where the kidney would be. This Again, this fighting style is um, being showcased as, you know, something that was perhaps very fluid and graceful turned into a straight up, you know, murdering style because that's what was needed, but having enough wherewithal to miss a vital organ. All right. Angles it, angles it up just enough to where the kidney wouldn't get stabbed. Why does it keep shrinking? Stop it. This one would also have advantage. All right. Well, 18 definitely hits. 8 reduced to 4. Yeah. All right. There's the the heavy breathing, the rise and fall of the chest and shoulders, your cuts striking and landing. There is actual weight behind your swings, but his body does not react. The slow turn, the heavy step as he rounds back. You watch as, like, with one hand, the axe slides from his grasp until he grabs the end, sort of holding near the pommel of the axe and bringing it up in this huge arc. Uh, it'll be another reckless attack. A 30 to hit. <laughs> that is a 22 to hit. Close it up. How much damage did you do to the first? I oh, you already produced it. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> dealing 12 points of damage. Yay! <sighs> Cutting across, sort of making an X, sort of tattering and tearing up the loose shirt that you're wearing. Well, you took that off. Oh, well, directly across your pectorals then. Yes. <laughs> My glistening trapezius. Again, that heavy and harsh tone as he's sort of like full teeth bared, tusks like protruding out, lips curled around them as he's breathing heavy. You can watch as sort of wafting steam rolls out of his mouth. Come on! Thanks. Your turn. Ugh. Well, since I... You just did 12, you said? Correct. Uh, whoops, why did that get thrown? That's dumb. Well, I guess you would still have advantage. Happen. That's a good thing anyway. So. 19. 19 definitely hits. Yeah, so I don't know whatever you round that up or down to. Um, yeah, I didn't mean to roll that soon, but yes. Uh, having the cut, he like skids back long enough to charge in. And uh, this time, uh, B pretty bloodied at this point because that really hurt uh, he lunges back in and it was kind of a more of a, an aggressive chop with the saber down kind of at his like at his chest kind of trying to match wounds with him basically like go match him absolutely and so and as he closes in he's like he just kind of like through his through gritted teeth I'm so glad we're on the same side. <laughs> <laughs> this is what friendship feels like. Does Let's see now. your second attack. At advantage. For me. 24. 24 hits, dealing 10 points of damage. Yes. And calculating it. Six. Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Dope. And then, like, as he does that, the the short sword is basically just stabbed because as he's, like, chopped down with the saber, he's tried to stab him again, kind of angled to outwards, you know, instead of into where all the guts would be. It's kind of, like, flesh wounding, but mm. not, not... You're not lethal. trying to eviscerate him. I'm not trying to basically, like, put him in the morgue. This is, like... It'll bleed and you'll hurt, but I'm not trying to, like, actually kill you. Yeah. It looks like he feels nothing, by the way. There's no flinch on his face. 
the entire time that you're striking or cutting him. Uh, it's just that gritted teeth expression as he's just bearing down on you. That was your two attacks. Are you staying there? Uh, yeah. He moved out and then, so yeah. You watch as he takes the axe and throws it to the side, the heavy great axe slamming across the stonework as he lunges forward, both arms attempting to wrap around you and send you to the ground. This would be, uh, he's attempting to grapple you. So athletics or acrobatics to attempt to escape. Okay. Um, okay, let's roll acrobatics. Oof. You are pinned to the ground as Torug's, uh slams on top of you, sort of landing the entirety of his body there. Uh, you can feel the like sort of uh, the sort of adrenaline that sh- that tremble that the body gets when that much adrenaline is pumping through the body. Uh, as he brings his fist up, and he sort of strikes giving you ample opportunity to move your head to the side as he connects his fist into the stonework, sort of cracking it there, uh, purposefully missing you, but making it look believable. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, Your turn. You are uh, grappled to the floor. I can... I can strike at him while grappled, right? Uh, correct. I believe if you attempt to attack anybody else, it'll be a disadvantage, but it's just Toro, so you're fine. Uh, da, 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 becomes zero. Yep, you're totally fine. So make your two attacks. Uh, he's still, it'd have been a, a, a quote unquote reckless, right? So he's opening himself up. So your attacks have advantage. Hmm. He's like pinning me to the ground. Correct. Saying, right? so it's that, uh, it's like that motion of, uh, <laughs> you've seen Invincible, right? Yes. The, the ending. Yep. That's what he's trying to do to you. <laughs> Please no. However, he is purposefully hitting the stonework beside your head and everything to miss. Uh, okay, with that, um, using kind of his natural sure. dexterity, um, he kind of wriggles like to the left and right, like he's trying to dodge more punches that may or may not be coming. Um, but in a kind of um, sort of a display of, of acrobatic finesse, uh, wriggles enough to uh, roll up his foot and brace it against the inside of his elbow so he can't punch down with his right fist. Mm. And uh, at that point, um, uh, turns the the short sword and, like, this might be a... Well, yes, do I, I, can I... Can I attack with the offhand first in this case, just for the, the lulls of it? I'll allow for this, sure. Yeah. Um, what might seem like this was a a good opportunity to kind of stab it into his face um, uses the kind of panic of the moment to just smack the flat right up against the top of his head and just whoop, I don't know. or the pommel actually that would be a better I use the pommel of it yeah. Yeah. 19 absolutely uh, he technically because he did not attack. So his rage would have fallen off. Can you not hear me? Oh, so now again, you kind of got spotty for a second. Oh, weird. Yeah, the screen had a little... Because he he didn't attack, technically, his rage fell off. So it's full damage. Okay. Okay, and... Still standing, though, still conscious. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, of course. 
you could tell this, this even like without rage, this this is a very hearty individual. No joke. You are very correct in the assumption that thankfully you are our ally. <laughs> yeah. Um, with his foot bracing on the inner elbow, uh, you know, kicks off on it and tries to roll around and um, using the saber's um, the saber's blade that's like the flat of it um, God, can he can I try to like put him in kind of a chokehold with the flat of the blade on it on his neck <laughs> like I'm already grappled and <laughs> it's kind of a counter grapple I guess if you would like to uh if you would like to roll athletics versus his, yes. I'll give it a shot, I guess. Oof. Good time for the dice to fail me. Ooh. Even when giving himself disadvantage. <laughs> uh it is it's in this moment uh where like you can see or at least the, the facade is starting to falter. The throwing is starting to become a little bit more apparent. He's let you take hold and let you start to choke. But like Lord Hain has sort of sat forward with this scrutinizing look. All right. Ooh. You have him grappled. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just uh, whispers like, Throw me off. Uh, which he is absolutely going to try and do. He's going to uh, try and break the grapple with his athletics. So go ahead and roll me another contested athletics. Say no more. You. Oh my god, this goddamn. Why? Why do you do this? Did, I... Did they fucking die on you again? Yes. It just turned the screen gray for no reason. There's some way you can tell. Rip. There's some way you can tell. Oh it. no! I love technical difficulties. They're so fun, so pog. They do spice things up. One moment. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Even trying to throw you off, uh, he does not succeed. <laughs> you would see like the actual attempt, the, the hands trying to grip and try to throw you from himself. But roll the nine. <laughs> to improve the sellability of this, um, you know, he's hooked his elbow on one side of the saber and with his hand is pulling up but his feet are wrapped around, wrapping around his waist from behind. So he's like clinging on to him like a spider monkey, trying to sell, you know, increase the sellability mm. of this particular situation. So he is making it look like he is straight up grappled onto him and trying to choke him out. Okay. Now, are you actually trying to choke him out? Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, just you know. Why not? Sure. Yeah, but just the whole point is to defeat him or. You know, if if he wants to like fake it by going to his knees or something, he'll ease up just enough to not like you know black him out entirely. But... Yeah, like tapping out. Yeah, if he's tapping out, basically. If uh, what check would you like to use, and he will make a con save versus it. Uh, or what are my options on this one? Uh, things like athletics, things like a oh. strength check. Um, we'll just we'll do athletics then, because I don't think I have any other particularly good bonuses in that. I mean, I can't really use acrobatics because I'm already clung to him. Let's see it then. Try to roll above a fucking nope. Just cannot roll well on athletics ever. Ooh, he rolled an eleven. Or a, a five, which gives him a bonus of 11. Jesus. So he is like 
hands up, clawing at, sort of digging his hands into the uh, sort of sharpened edge of the blade, cutting and dragging blood there as he's trying to pull it from his throat. Others are cheering, sort of cheering for Torog and booing you, Kellen. Naturally. Oh. Okay, Alric is going to cheer for Kellen. Uh, I got somebody in my corner, at least. It is yeah. your turn. Kevin? Is it, so his rage ended, right? It's been ended, yeah. Yeah, okay, I was making sure I had that right. Um, God, I guess I'll sell this somehow. <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, right when he's trying to wrench off the blade from his neck, um, he'll tense up like he's trying to double down on it, and at the last moment release and then kick off from from behind him and try to uh, crisscross him across the back to uh, mm. to end this. Let's see it. Ooh. One, and then twisting in the air with the short sword, he cuts back across the other way. Great team, damn. 22. <laughs> Roaming inside check. You watch as you slash across his back, this sort of moment where he seizes up the body growing taut. You can see the, the thick cords of muscle that are there as you slash and open them. His body growing taut as he collapses forward. Uh, you would know, <laughs> based on uh, your insight check, he's bloodied at best. But he's going, he's falling down regardless. Correct. Okay. With that, oh. as he collapses to the stonework, that heavy thud as he basically threw himself. Got it. Yeah, but the cuts were, <laughs> were you know, non-lethal, but it probably looked really good facing the crowd, I'm sure. Absolutely. Like yeah, in terms of, in terms of hit points, uh, he still has about 40. Jesus! Guy's like level fucking 10 here, bro! Close. But, you know, as, as, as beat up as he is, He's has CR4. been. But... <laughs> as beat up as he has been, I'm sure this looks convincing -ish. Absolutely. Yeah. He falls to the ground. Mm. A heavy thud, shaking the stonework. An exhale from the crowd, the cheers beginning to die down. Lord Hain very quickly standing up at this turn of events. Now, for this whole thing, I will let you choose what persuasion skill you would like to roll versus Lord Hain. Persuasion, intimidation, or deception. Or performance. Smile. Or performance. Persuasion. Intimidation. How convincing was the WWE Super Slam? Indeed. <laughs> but it was persuasion, intimidation, or deception. Or, or performance. performance. Performance is literally the only one of those I'm proficient. <laughs> Easy. I Let's got see. you. Do I get advantage from our stellar combat performance? The DC is lowered. <laughs> I will say, I will say, given Alaric's cheering for you versus the cheering of the crowd, I'll say you have an advantage. 
your DC <laughs> is 13. When the, uh, when the... Ooh, shit! Nice. Good thing, too, because I would have gotten fucked up. calorie has got your back, baby. There is a uh, one That's slow fun. clap. As the orc falls, uh, Yuria would be doing, like, the polite, slow applaud. Staring down, watching how all of this had unfolded, Lord Hain grimaces, giving a shake of his head. How utterly pathetic. I expected so much more, Torog. Enforcers, take him to the best deal. Yes. Not before giving him to the alchemist. I want to send him down there with something special. No. <laughs> yeah. Torug's body sort of shaking as the adrenaline is dying down, pushing himself up to his hands and hands and knees, trying to stand. Realizing that his axe is nowhere near him, he's forced to like press his hands to his knees and try to push himself up, the blood oozing down the length of his back as he looks up at Lord Hain, dragging in this deep breath and spitting as close to him as he can. Lord Hain, grinning wide. And ensure that she uses... The special blade. He waves his hand. The enforcers begin to move into the arena and you are escorted out. Kellen. <laughs> so the real vanished. Indeed. Alaric is going to catch him as he arrives. I am caught. My friend, you fight like a lion. <laughs> well, it would be more convincing if it was a better matchup, but luckily Torig is... He is with us on that. Are you sure you weren't trying to kill him? I definitely did not wish to, no. <laughs> Orcs a big deal, huh? Literally and otherwise. Yes, well, if he wasn't with us then, I'm pretty sure he would have wiped the floor with me. Lowering his voice and leaning in closer to Gellin's Oh, if that I have no doubt. I appreciate your cheers, however. I'm pretty sure it helped sell the, uh, the act. Oh, don't worry. I cheered if only to oppose the crowd. I was hoping one of them would boo so I could punch him. <laughs> Again, the attention of the priest, the mouth of the Iron Duke, who drawn now away from their thoughts to you. And with malicious compliance, heal you. <laughs> Knowing full well the pain this brings, Alaric will preemptively loop an arm around Kellen's left and sort of help him to the stool as he's getting eldritchly stitched together. Kellen like shudders, like, oh, at the fucking healing, but you know, is grateful to not be bleeding uh, when he sits down and. Uh, Starts to tug his, his shirt back on. Was the cut that he made himself still there, or did that also get closed up? That also got... Sure. Uh, That's fine. It is not a, a, like... It is one where, like, you feel your diaphragm seize from how yeah. intense this this healing yeah. is. Why he shuddered and everything. He's just like... Ugh, ugh, uh, and, of course, we have to leave our weapons behind, right? Indeed. Yeah, so he's unarmed and uh, moves back and flops onto the bench. 
back at full health, though. Yeah. Cool. Just Lord Hayne turns to look at uh, the Lord beside him, giving a small raised brow as the figure has just more or less been like dissociating, like not even really here, just <laughs> going through these motions of like cheering when everybody else cheers and like nodding in approval whenever Lord Haynes says something. Uh, but the moment that Black. all of you are like sat and Torug is being drug away. He pushes himself up to stand and turns to face Lord Hain as if like whispering, sort of leaning down and whispering to him while he's in his chair, sort of talking to one another. Lord Hain's expression, this wide growing grin again, as he's nodding along to whatever being, whatever's being said until eventually he gives a nod gesturing over his shoulder to one of the plated individuals who approaches and begins to escort the Lord out. There is one... Out? Uh, Lord Torden. Mm. One final look back over his shoulder to all of you. Specifically, Crovain mm -hmm. and Silvero. She's not looking. Her nose is high, and she's <laughs> looking over here. Her Hillary ears is are pointed right. as high as they can be. <laughs> Hot. Hot. And spicy. Lord Torsten says nothing. Is eventually guided out of the arena. And you are left there in silence. For a long moment, it is Lord Hain talking to the mouth of the Iron Duke. Speaking to one another in hushed tones. You were given a moment to talk amongst yourself if you so liked. Uh, as Torsten was departing, in fact, there's a moment he looked at Silurio and himself, his face had rearranged into like a mask of lopsided anger from that smile he wore for Kellen. And it takes him a moment to quell that fire long enough to spit out some words that inadvertently he says to Morana beside him. That fucking rat. Look at him flaunting about. Dressed all nice. Is, Just is kind it, of, yeah, notes that. Is it loud enough for Yuria to hear? Or is it <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yuria leans forward. What about uh, Silver? Could she hear? I guess it's quiet enough, maybe. Are you shouting? Are you shouting? Uh, the voice of Alaric is like a groan, right? Like far away and felt more than her. It resonates almost like a battlefield's voice. So the anger, more than the coherence of his words, she'd probably hear that. Sure, it's snort. Go ahead. Sorry, uh, Yuria. No, you're good. Yuria would lean forward. Bit of history there, I presume. Oh, him. Him I know. He whacks an index finger in his direction, attention still set on the ground, unaware that he's even speaking to Yuria, or at least doesn't show. She's perfectly fine with that, just sort of supplying Supply. the noise to get him to continue. Now I wonder if he's been bought, or if he's been convinced, and maybe that's why Hain brought us here. He wanted us to be the tipping point. That last cornering sword, putting him up to a wall, then squeezing him with all his little rat fears. display of his wares, so to speak. Mm. No offense intended, Alaric, but if he could obtain a prince of Tyrion. 
heroes. That would be convincing for someone. I have to speak to him. Get my hands on him. I like chuckle. They won't let you. Your t actions spoke enough. I doubt you'll see him again. Well, if all goes to plan, perhaps you'll get your chance in the end. Is he a particularly foul individual, or is it just a personal disagreement? No, no. He's a coward. And to see him here, I need to know what it means. It seems that he is in league with Lord Hain, at least. I don't believe so. I think he hasn't been convinced yet. This whole situation is... frustrating. What, the important <laughs> part or everything else? <laughs> everything. Do you think Hain clothed us like this because he's merciful? No, he's maneuvering us, putting up a display. He's pretending that we're with him, but in some degree have fallen in with his beliefs. This is all a show. It has to be. Well, I must I suppose it just matters if he's trying to convince us or everyone else. It could be a bit of both. Likely. Two birds, one stone. Makes sense. I have other matters to attend to this evening. Your time in the arena is over. For you six, you'll return to yourselves. The rest of you, it's down to the mines. You hear like audible groans, some of them shooting glares in your direction. Silaril would glare back very menacingly. Ah, <laughs> oh, Silaril's resting bitch face at it again. <laughs> uh, so much for making friends. Compared to the more meek prisoners that you've often run across, these ones uh, sort of more gnarled in, exp uh, in expression and appearance, sort of uh, like thick curled beards, deep gouges and scars across their face. They, uh, <laughs> if criminal were to have a generic appearance, it would be those gentlemen sat across from you. Uh, they do not appear as easily uh, shaken as the others you come across. <laughs> Beat. Do something. Sort of muttering to each other, speaking, glancing over. Give a shake of their head. They all begin to move. As the enforcers begin to move as well. Eventually, the other five remaining prisoners are escorted out. All of you are escorted back to your cells. Lord Hain, sort of watching as you all are ascending the stairs as enforcers begin to move, uh, sort of gesturing you all forward. Lord Hain giving a very approving nod and grin to all of you. Very well done. You exceeded my expectations today. look of utter disgust on her face. Almost a shame that she gave him a show. Sildril, however, is not. <coughs> a show is a show to her. A battle is a battle. <laughs> she just doesn't even, like, have any expression. Just that dark, bleh 
in her eyes. Despite not even performing, uh, Yuri bows her head in acceptance. <laughs> <laughs> well, your performance was telepathy bargaining. <laughs> <laughs> what you did, you're actually really good at. That persuasion roll was clutch. Lord Hain, looking very pointedly at you, Alaric, because you were the first to approach. A brow raised, almost as if expecting you to say something. Alaric is staring back, but not intently. There's a lack of focus in his stare. The sort of thinking look as though he's trying to process something about him. As though putting together a thing, an explanation, yeah. And the table for such setting of the plan is Haynes' face. He wears that familiar, sort of confident grin, one that he has worn just about every time he has seen the party. Those elongated canines on full display. What's your angle here? The brows knit together. As you approach, you hear the sort of rattle of plate mail of the two figures by the door, his hand coming up and stopping them. Looking at you, his hand slowly falls back now. You bring a nobody to the arena. You make him watch. Why? Are you beginning from the bottom? Did I not tell you during dinner that it was your grandfather who sided with the Iron Duke? Not everybody of his court was so easily persuaded. As such, I brought those that were more hesitant to change. Those more comfortable in their positions of power than run the risk of losing it. And I showed him you. All of you. Those he was very interested in seeing. And we played into your hand. We gave him the show you wanted. We made him believe, didn't we? The grin grows wide. You put on a hell of a performance. It won't matter if you convince Thorsten. He's a coward. The moment an army comes to his keep, he will give in. He'll say everything. <laughs> this is not a victory for you. If anything, it is a weak link you've added to yourself. <laughs> oh, very presumptuous, Crovain. You needn't worry. When you accept the offer of the Iron Duke, you will see that even the weakest can be reinforced, made stronger. Consider it an investment. Take them away. Yuri steps forward. A well-built plan, my lord. With such... With how you run this, keep it a wonder you aren't the duke himself. She gives him a gracious curtsy. There is no reaction from Lord Hain. He nods forward with his head, the two guardsmen at the door stepping forward. 
you are now being escorted out of the arena and back to your cells. As his approach, a feeling of wrongness passes over like icy fingers caressing the back of Alaric's neck. But he can't really identify this. His hands go stiff, fist like, and he turns. And if and he tries to put a hand on them, which, well, I guess he tried to shove them back and walk on his own. Before we're escorted, I'd like to do an insight check on Al uh, Haynes' blank expression. By all means. Oh, everything's lagging. Oh, here we go. <laughs> insight this, Grace. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, everything is lagging. Holy shit. He remains steadfast, a neutral expression that beats your scrutinizing gaze. You know he is hostile. You know that he treats you with that air of superiority. And in this moment, he does not let anything go. It is hard to read. But he grins at you as all of you leave, escorted out of the arena and back to your cells. Silver so would just kind of look at him for like a really long time as the others passed her. <laughs> just looking at him. As the others are leaving, one of the guards approaching, he sort of again raises the hand. You have something to say. Mm. No, my lord. She would just leave with everyone else. As the others are escorted, he... Wait. Hmm. Gestures you back. As the others are being pulled away. Waiting for you to approach, he sort of gestures you to close the distance. Striding forward, the heavy footfalls of plate. As he approaches, he would lean down, having to actually lean down to get to your ear. The next time that one of that house approaches and you stare at them with such anger, let me know and I can arrange for you to deal with them however you wish. You're mistaken, my lord. I adore House Ashford. I would lie down and gladly give my life for them. But that one would lay down before me. There's a wide grin, lips pulling upwards. Lord Torsten will arrive in two days after his departure here. Say the word, and he'll find himself in an empty chamber and a single blade. There's a, <clears throat> there's like a, there's like a spark in her eye, right? It's like a, as if like a, a, a blacksmith was in a dark room and had struck the anvil, right? It is like a, such a tantalizing tease as she just like, her eyebrow and like eye would twitch a bit at the thought of it. 
end if he were to fail to come out of that room and only one stood out covered in blood. Well, it's a shame that his vessel was lost at sea. That would truly be a shame. You can see a sort of the, the lips pulling up even more, revealing those teeth, the arm coming out, that sort of warrior clasp offering the, his arm to you. I do hope he makes it home safe. She would <clears throat> bow like a court curtsy. All right. <laughs> Leaving Lord Haynes' arm extended as you turn. Being escorted out now. His fingers curl and words tightly. You can hear the sort of uh, rattle of his clawed gauntlets as they curl to a tight fist. <laughs> we'll see. And you all escorted back to your cells. left alone the sound of the leather armor and chainmail wearing guards vanishes you are left in your cells so Laura would sit on the edge of her bed kind of hands laced and clasped tightly uh, between her like legs as she rests there staring down at the floor. Was it obvious to us, to the rest of the party, that she was pulled away? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it and had been the rest looking... of the party walking, and then it had been Sildaro, like, being pulled back. And you guys would have been continuing forward. She'd have been the last one to join the party. So it'd be super obvious. In looking around here from the cells, from the bars, is there any card? Want me a perception check? Ten. None that you can see. No audible sniffle or anything like that. Okay, feeling the wall beside him, touching the stonework, feeling for any loose pebble or stone, little rock. Does Alaric find anything projecting? I'll say so, sure. He'll throw it to Silurus. Sort of catching on the bar there, that resonating ting as it echoes off. Any reaction from Silurus? Sorry, I don't. I didn't hear anything. What? Uh, Alaric threw a little, like, piece of the, like, he broke off a little piece of the wall and threw it at your cell to try and get your attention. Her eyes would dart upward and watch it trickle across the floor. Would stand and approach like the 
the gate. As she comes into view, Elric reaches out behind him and as though from out of nowhere summons a sign made out of styrofoam that says, Do you like me? Put a question. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Hey, Laura returns to her chair. <laughs> what did he ask? He did not ask anything. There was the mind games. Um, Ian. Sildura. <laughs> How long had, um, <clears throat> uh, Torsten been in the Ashford family? Ooh. It had been a relatively recent, uh, situation, so probably no more than five years. Okay. But ever since he's joined the family, he has been a rat. Conniving, setting up deals, you know, betrayals, but as to be expected of somebody in that situation, giving up land that belonged to others to House Ashford. Ultimately, it benefited them, but it was a, a betrayal. It was a lack of honor. My kind of man. Serves as an advisor. So to some degree, his opinion is respected. Or perhaps just tolerated. It was never entirely clear. Uh, from this moment on, Alaric will speak in Elvin. And his accent is horrible. He's very hard to understand. And he pauses a lot, very caustic, and he has this effect where he's saying a word and he'll finish it in common. <laughs> so Laura would listen to him kind of like with like a crooked, like, like a crooked nostril. <laughs> she would listen to him talk for like long like very long elven ears twitching a bit as he spoke. It is a disgrace to the language, but even Yuri is looking at him through the bar. <laughs> like a fucking cringe from Kellum, like what? absolutely uh, completely Krongo. Did he say anything about Torsten? Of course he did. I think bringing Torsten here was a chip for him to play that benefits both sides. He like offered... what? Mm. Should be speaking back in perfect Elven, by the way. Uh, <laughs> he offered to put <sighs> essentially toasting away in an accident, if you will, not to be made to go home. Hmm? He... he offered you... to kill him? Yes. Oh... Oh, that is good. That means he hasn't turned him. Oh, it makes sense. Of course. The irony, can you see it? Mm. Responding in... In Elvish, just to like keep the conversation on the same track. His Elvish is quite good, actually. Like he might have been raised with it. Oh no. Uh, or he's just a disposable chip to be used. He may have his allegiance, but perhaps he's willing to sacrifice him to secure yours. I'll not have blackmail upon my shoulders. Well, it sounds more like he's trying to secure your allegiance by offering him to you. I don't know what was said. Austin is discussing 
is a terrible rat upon the world, especially my family. He is a man who, from almost nothing, brought himself up to where he now is. And see, in this world of ours that we've carved for ourselves in Tyros, where disloyalty is the norm, <laughs> I find it kind of ironic that it's the same disloyalty that's denying him. See, loyalty is a dangerous foundation. It tends to wash away in a storm. But self-interest, self-interest stands in any weather. And I don't think he sees any interest here. I think he can tell that Hain is a risk. No. I think he feels Hain. And when rats are scared, they bite or run. Hmm. I'm not going to do it. I will not be talked into it. Good. We need him alive. He's one of ours. She would kind of raise her nose and look pointedly at Alric. Dawson. Siloril, like it as not, the man hasn't been turned. Just because he has not been turned does not make him an ally to me. Watching him stand there at the... We're lacking in friends. Gonna let pride stand in the way of the... Agreed. Yuria's voice chimes up from behind Alaric, also in Elvish, a very different dialect than the one perhaps spoken in Tyrdos. Indeed. More formal. Silver would hiss. <clears throat> we cannot correct the misapprehensions of every lord any more than we can correct the tide. But if he's made up his mind and Hain has scared him off, we can use that. Exactly, how do you wish to use him? Hmm? We must wait. I am sure an opportunity will present itself. But we should not antagonize him any further. <laughs> There's a small clearing of the throat behind Alaric. If she... She assumes she she doesn't have any sight of Silaril's cell, so she mostly is talking to Alric behind his back. Mm -hmm. If she were to accept this deal and then admit to Torstein of Ain's betrayal, well, a rat can betray more than just one individual, more than just Ashford. It would not be something I think Hain would expect. Can Solaril hear her? Probably. That's not an answer. I mean, if you if uh, she's speaking loud enough that um, if she can hear Solaril, then yeah, I would say that uh, you can hear her. Solaril just leave the bars. I think you're both, or at least one of you, is expecting a lot of deception from someone whose tongue might not take to the flavor. Those are the best liars. Yeah. Perhaps in Silverell's case there is no honor in lying. Absolutely not. There's also no honor in politics. That's why I chose to go to the Grey Watch and not into the court. Alec. I do not want to meet with him. He can sail home forever, however he wants to. Silorel, you have to. Why? 
you have the only chance to speak to him. And what would I say to him? Would I simply tell him of all the horrible things he has in plan? No, no. No. With a man like this, you don't speak. You let him tell you everything he knows. Corner him. Do that thing you do, put fear in him. He will let you know everything you have to say. Kellen when that time see... comes. Oh, okay, what? Sorry, go ahead. Kellen would see Silver kind of <clears throat> unaware of him being there. <laughs> if he's <laughs> looking into the cell, yeah, her face like... would just soften to a sad expression as she sat on the edge of her bed, putting her head like in her hands. What's the matter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to meet with him. Then don't. You're going to have to come up with a good reason for me to meet with him. Otherwise, I would love him to sail back to his rat hole. So I can meet him later with my blade. In a place where my actions cannot be used as leverage against me. Oh, why... Why do you think he denied... Hey, it wasn't loyalty that he felt for the king. He's afraid of the king and his ally. When he left Rofield and sided with Ashford, he knew Rofield stood no chance. They're dwindling as we speak. It was a matter of who was the biggest fort. Now he tells this man, this coward, this rat, that he must turn against the whole kingdom. What do his instincts tell him? Run. Cut a deal. Get out of it and ahead if you can. You need only push him. Push him enough to run to the king or whoever, perhaps Rofiel. The Iron Duke must be stopped. And this is how it begins, with a coward. Her eyes light up. Don't say its name. There are those whose eyes are attracted when mouths whisper that. Then let it be the end of the conversation. Think on it. Make up your mind as you like. Elric leans away from the bars, looking still at that sliver, that fairy fairy of Silurel to the bars, and then moves closer to the bed, sitting down. Kellen there are, being, sorry, go ahead. There are uh, two dark, glittering orbs that watch him in a God. wide smile. You're so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kellen being at her window. Um, isn't quite finished with the conversation, but more on a different track. Well, while there is some merit in some of the things that they say, but I don't think that's quite how you like to play things. On the other hand, once we get out of here, the fact that you saw him with Lord Hain does give you a certain credibility, either to get information from him or to meet him on your own terms. I need proof. And we should look to find it, shouldn't we? This one swords do not take two names or words so well. Understood. It's much the same with the Grey Watch. Talk is cheap. The actions are worth the weight in gold. And as much as Lord Archford refers to me as his daughter and ward, Yes, my presence being in this place shows my 
gravity is not as much as I perceived. Well, the swirling of politics is sort of like a bad storm. It swirls around you and sometimes it's all you can do to keep your head above water. I won't I had... go to this room. Well, perhaps that's for the best. Playing into Hain's hands is only going to benefit one person, and that would be Hain. It certainly wouldn't be for your benefit. Although he'll try to play it off like it is. I don't know. Do... If I go to this room, wherever he's playing out, What was that, Ishan? Sorry. If I go to this room, whatever he's playing at, I... A lot of my training has left me to be remain calm, but... I would be a liar if temptation was not strong. Mm. And I may find myself weak. I'm not so sure that there's anything weak about you. Temptation is normal. And the way that you fight, and the way that you move, even the way that you speak, I'd say that you have all the counsel you need. Trust in yourself. Do what she you She sits up straight do. back to tr with like narrowing eyes as she tries to like. <laughs> She tries to uh, understand why you're saying such nice things. <laughs> well, he's just speaking what, observe, what he's observing. Yeah, I know. She's just like, hmm. <laughs> but you know, sometimes people may offer their counsel and it's good to hear words of others like advice, right? But it's up to you whether you feel it's good for you to take it. I have two days to decide. I believe we've already decided, haven't we? Who knows? In two days, we may not even be here. Well, with any luck, the tables will change in that time. Mm. Anyway, shall we uh, pick up where we left off? You have a song unfinished. Mm. The whole of the day, this day, the 23rd, you are given leave and are allowed to stay within your cells. You are fed lunch, you are fed dinner, but you are not required to go and toil in the mines below. The whole day is yours. Now, is there any conversations that would have been had or anything like that during the whole of the day? Again, every time that you eat, you are by yourselves. Like by yourselves or like actually? <laughs> Obviously you yourself. have guards, <laughs> <laughs> but there are no other prisoners. Isolation. Alienation. You are fed better and better food. Your dinner that evening is an actual serving of steak. Mm. Potatoes, vegetables, wine is brought in. As the food gets more and more luxurious, uh, Uria's face deepens harder and harder into uh, a scowl. She uh, accepts the food, but it's sort of a bitter enjoyment. Anybody else? His thanks for having us do his dirty work for him. Well, more likely trying to bribe us with a better condition so that we'll be more amenable to what he wants. Showing us what we could have. If Is we my friend behind the, on the counter? <laughs> no. Damn it. 
again, it's it's uh, it's not prisoners who are giving you this food. It is other enforcers. There's a frown. <laughs> If there's nothing else, for the sake of brevity, you are given your shower. You are given actual soap <laughs> and given what? actual water. <laughs> it is pulled uh, from their, uh, their well that they have. Heated, treated, no longer salt water. Fuck. And you are given actual soap. You are allowed to clean yourself. New clothes are provided to you. If your shoes or anything are worn, new shoes are provided. Oh, fuck. And the night is uneventful. You are brought back to your cells. Feeling probably more refreshed, having washed off the residual salt water that's been clinging to your skin. The sweat of battle. Heat. Blood. What have you. For the 24th of God's Night, who of the party would like to be responsible for rolling the D100? I'll do it. Is everybody fine with Sabine What is the D100 for? This determines what you're doing today. Oh, God. <laughs> and she has to roll it? <laughs> well, that's why I was asking. Is Guess everybody... We're going. Okay? Guess we're going to the beaten chamber. <laughs> now they're going to take our fucking shoes, man. 37. It is an uneventful day. You are not required to go to the arena or go to the mines. You are allowed to stay within your cells. Languish. Eventually, Yuri just languishing in the cells uh, would peek over uh, into Alaric's cell being the closest at this point Alaric is without his shirt his pants nice. are rolled up to the knee and he's doing sit-ups <laughs> there's Sabine a will watch. there is a point where she opens her mouth to talk and then uh, stops <laughs> And she takes Still rolls matching him instead of <laughs> <laughs> understood. Yeah. She understood the assignment. She's she's also uh working out with him. And Alaric is huge on calisthenics. So you'll be seeing planks, lunges, yep. jumping jacks, pull ups, burpees, push ups. Yeah. Fuck, even trunk twist, but no burpees here. <laughs> no burpees. No burpees. Burpees not, enough, not enough dexterity for burpees, I see. Yeah, not even a bit. He, all, he all does each one time falls on his yeah, face at the end. Every time his big fucking nose made for birds to perch on would just cleave the ground. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sabine would be doing like almost like a yoga. Oh lordy. But the positions that she holds herself in, it's it's for the building of dex, not strength. It's like she's... Ho Contortioning yourself. Yes. Understood. Yuria? She's just watching. Oh, Eventually, okay. she would be a uh, pipe in, probably unwanted. <laughs> you know? You're a lot more canny than you look. He stops on a push-up, his head slightly turning left in her direction, Is but seeing only down? the wall. Is he up or oh, down? Fucker. He is up. Fuck! <laughs> Silverail's up. <laughs> Shit. There is this almost, there is this soft, lazy smile like a cat on her face. He slowly collects himself, sitting up pushing back and leaning onto the frame of the He pulls the shirt from the mattress itself, moves up to his forehead, and rubs off the sweat. What do you mean? 
You have a political mind, one that is buried under rough beard and even rougher face. Decent ass, though. <laughs> a well, somewhat broken uh, accent of Elvish, but we can work on that. Are you trying to say that there is hope for me yet? She chuckles. Maybe. I think, perhaps. You are... Hmm. You perhaps are a better liar than I am. Ooh, this brings pause. Alaric's hand going stiff while cleaning his forehead. There's a bit of a scramble, and it sounds as his legs unfurl and he hurriedly pushes himself up to the bed as to look over the edge of the wall separating them. A curious face. On account of this whole time, he's been under the windowsill, right? So he couldn't see. You're not serious. Mm. This whole time, I've been taking lessons from you. Her eyes sort of narrow, the smile widens. Ooh, deflecting with more compliments, hmm? <laughs> I just mean to say that every liar in this prison, and there are many, ought to be coming to you to pay respect. The, uh, the humor doesn't leave. Uh, she shrugs, well... As long as you're being truthful, I appreciate the comment. It is an art. And you do it well. Hmm. Marana, what have you been doing today? Huh? What? What have you been doing today? Uh, I... I don't even fucking know. Everything okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. I just... I don't have anything I can do. Very well. The whole of the day you are treated to, again, good meals. A sizable portions for breakfast a decent lunch, and a very exquisite dinner, this time being served uh, lobster and crab. Mm, any, any, uh, what, like commotion or anything like that regarding a certain, perhaps, escaped prisoner? You can go ahead and roll me an insight check if you'd like. Oh, can I go in on this? Wait, no, I don't have proficiency on that, actually. You could roll your own, I suppose. I don't have proficiency either, but I will roll one. Why not? <laughs> May I? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Oh, jeez. At least one of us can mm. roll. <laughs> Holy fuck. Uh, Alaric, you would see that there is a, a sort of subtle shift to... Kinsley's expression, the otherwise placid, neutral, uncaring look that the guard captain wears has been replaced with this sort of uh, apprehension, sort of studying U6 specifically. Whereas before his attention was like that of just a constantly turning camera the entirety of your your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, he is staring at all of you. Who? The guard captain. Mm, okay. Once you notice this is different, this change in behavioral pattern, Alaric immediately goes for Julius' count. He would, 
under the table, sat beside her, reached down to take her wrist, and with his other hand dissimulated, point at his own head in a come in kind of way. <laughs> she almost jumps at the uh, at the touch, having to force herself to relax so nobody suspects. She side eyes Alric. And there is a pause, a long pause. She seems almost confused, and then understanding his request, she looks genuinely shocked, this being the first time anyone's ever asked her, <laughs> invited her into their mind. <laughs> but she does as he requests, and she will to cast Detect Thoughts. Okay. What are your surface thoughts, Alaric? I assume you're Alaric's willingly mind... failing the save, right? Yes, Alaric's mind is an open book. There's a lot of things, and hopefully she doesn't dig too deep, because on the surface there's already a lot to read. <laughs> he'd, he'd explain there, elucidate even, from his perspective, given as images on his thoughts of the change in behavior the captain had. His worries that it might mean that their plan either worked or it backfired. Mostly believing that it worked. Being a proving now that she's in his head that he's a boss, uh, an optimist. She retorts using language instead of feeling since she has that capacity. Either he is aware of what happened. Although I'm surprised, I would assume Hain would have immediately pinned us as the guilty party, being so closely tied to Torig. I'll be honest, I was expecting these niceties to disappear. However, if they wish to keep it under wraps, perhaps the stress is evidence for such a thing. Or... Or the captain has not been told of Haynes' intentions for us, and seeing us like this concerns him. <laughs> Jira's words, as she goes into explaining, builds up a crescendo of emotions in Alec. And it goes <laughs> like this. It goes doubt, 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 fear, 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 doubt, doubt, fear. <laughs> Hesitation, and then that slowly leaning and agreeing into what she arrives. One thing, that cushioning truth. He nods down to himself, to the food, but mostly to her. Her eye starts to twitch as she's... <laughs> uh, feels the onslaught of your <laughs> uh, anxiety. Try to focus, please, or I'm going to dig deeper. Uh, a flurry of twitches runs up the left side of Alaric's face, and his eyelids, eyelids sorry, start flickering. I'm going to roll that safe now. <laughs> <laughs> roll me a wisdom safe. Oh no. You have full access. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck the devil's in. Jira, uh, feeling that tug against her will, tugs back. <laughs> mm. Her eyes flick, focusing on Alaric. She takes a long bite of her delectable steak as she watches him. Are we really allies, Alaric, in this? Will we be friends when we leave this prison? You hear in your voice, in your head. Friends or allies or what have you. You'd feel that straining sensation of him 
trying to avoid even visiting the topic. Kind of like how when you don't want to think of something, you end up thinking more about it. Mm -hmm. But in truth, Alaric hadn't asked himself this at all. And it is curious bringing up the question that makes him start to answer it to himself. And it's strange, right? In his, in his mind, it's like this hardening diorama of possibilities. Friends, enemies, elves, they suck, right? <laughs> but slowly, he turns to her, his vision slightly softened, and a big fat no shows up. I'm kidding. He... <laughs> he taps the wood of the table twice with a knuckle. And says very softly in spoken word, "If we make it out, we'll be friends." There's a slow nod, and you hear in your voice again, "I don't think I've really had a friend before, a brother, a family. There are very little friends in Shadeborn, and I have no resources here in Tyros." No real leg in this race besides Hain. You seem like an honest lad. Perhaps that makes you more dangerous. Hmm. And you would feel almost like... <laughs> It feel like a hand releasing from your head, or like a snake uh, uncoiling from your mind, leaving it mostly unmolested. Is he able still to reply to her through their thought? Uh, she can hear your surface thoughts, I believe, for the next 30 minutes, but she has sort of given up listening to your, uh, your deeper thoughts. Uh, ideas the inner stinking goods he'd rather keep on check wait what those inner stinking goods you'd indeed. rather keep on check indeed i understand you're a foreigner here but as for being an honest man that ship sailed long ago and i wasn't even there to wave it off There is a... She has to repress a smile, but you can see it on the tip of her lip. Well, then let's be dishonest together. It is at this point that he lets go of her wrist and instead bumps her knuckles with his and then resumes eating. She sort of looks at her knuckles. Obviously <laughs> not, like, aware what of what this... What the fuck did you just <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A very crude, very human gesture. There you go. <laughs> Your dinner is cut short. A member of the guards, the plated guards, is the first one to enter the galley, rushing over and beginning to speak with guard captain. It's a very quick, very short discussion. One-sided, resulting in only a nod from the captain. The other guards begin to round you up. Whether your meal is finished or not, you are escorted back to your cells. Sabine chugs the wine before she has to go. <laughs> like Amazing. a sorority girl, Same. you... <laughs> Same. <laughs> the wine is being emptied by the glass as you're like trying to pull it with you. <laughs> like, no! no. Look, us Katarina girls, okay? We understand. <laughs> Say to say to Kappa Katarina, right? <laughs> say to Kappa Katarina, yep. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. As you are all pushed back into your cells, the doors slammed close. You hear footfalls through the entirety of the black cells, individuals moving very quickly, some shouting commands that are being heard, echoing from deeper within and moving throughout the hall or the hall itself. The entirety of the hall grows quiet suddenly. A stillness. 
that takes the entirety of the black cells. Wine lingering on your lips, the delectable food that was served. As anxiety begins to grow. An anxiousness not born of your own actions, but just a general feeling in the air. A tightness that begins to take hold in your stomach, forming knots. The air shifting almost. The general cold air here of the black cells begins to almost fade. Everybody roll me a perception check. Bear. Bear. <laughs> Everybody can smell this very faint scent of ash that begins to drift into the black cells. And as your attention is drawn to it, attempting to begin to speak to one another, you hear muffled, more shouting commands, and then what follows. The distant sounds of cannon fire. That's what we're going to call tonight's session. No. No. Good. There is. So the one would approach the bars and grip them, looking for Kellen. <laughs> Dude, I want to see Torag fucking behead Hay now, please. You talking about Torag, I'm more worried about his dad, Spinebreaker, just being like, you know how I got my name? <laughs> Hainbreaker. <laughs> Thank you guys right. for playing. We will pick we'll up next week, with, next week yeah. with episode 10 of Cometh the Fall, The it Siege is. of Hain Keep. Quick, someone raid so we can extend the session. <laughs> Even if you were to raid, I've already gone 30 minutes past my allotted time. I do have a question. Um, will we be playing on the 5th? What's on the 5th? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Mm. <laughs> Wait, the 5th? The 5th is the Saturday. The 4th? Or, yes, the 4th of March. Will we be playing on the 4th of March? What is on the 4th of March? Bro, there's Bro I'm going to be playing there. That. I'm going to be playing in the U.S. Like, hell yeah. That's yet. what I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Mm. Uh oh. Uh, Toby uh, says more. What do you do, Dion? More! Uh, Somebody oh. raid him right now! Toby, I think my friend, I uh, cannot do so, but I very much appreciate your reason. Wasted. He I'll does have a lot of things. Keep playing. Stop. <laughs> I'll donate right now. I have to. I have to do a little bit more prep. I rated. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I see. In that I case, see. Yeah. Much like Elric's brain, I shall back off. Just a little bit more prep is all. As we get to the tenth episode, where the party now has to survive the siege of Hain Keep. Survive. It's gonna be that fucking scene from Pirates of the Caribbean one where like Captain Jack's just stuck for the entire siege in the cell, <laughs> trying to get out, and we're just like, please, <laughs> watching all the other prisoners escape, and we're just stuck there. Oh. There's a dog that shows up. <laughs> Caleb, yes, this reminds. Me. <laughs> Alric might pull in a seer and try to break the cell with his face. Oh, here we oh, go no. again. <laughs> Hey, bro, the keys are right here. No. <laughs> they toss him the keys. He just ignores them. Keeps that running face first at the door. <laughs> the current day, oh, no. as the day turns and you are brought back to your cell, it is the 25th of God's Night. Midnight. And the orcs attacked. Oh, we didn't even get to see a scene where, like, Torug was rescued from the water. You wanted a cinematic? <laughs> like a scene between the, the fish lady and Torog. How cool would that be? That's a cinematic. That's why I didn't know if you guys wanted something like that or not. I didn't know sure. if that would take you out of it. That's a great idea, Momo. Holy shit. Yeah, that would be like, nice. Actually. As long as the cinematics aren't, you know, um, fucking 
you know, done by a narcissist, I have no problem with them. You know? <laughs> oh, then, okay. sure, the recount next week. We'll take yeah, we'll, we'll take through the perspective of Priestess Shalyu and her Sahagan warriors springing Torug Grimtooth from the Bastille and bringing him to his father aboard the Premura. I was with And then they yeah. back. There's a difference between like the DM RPing with himself to set a scene for the players, right? And a narcissist are paying with himself because he's too full of his own voice. You know what I mean? The the initial fear was like, oh, this would this would break the the verisimilitude, the whole like holding this suspension of disbelief. If I were to be like, and the camera pans back to reveal the Bastille, like that was my fear, so I didn't do anything like that. But if you guys like that would... idea, for the recount next week, I definitely yeah, think I that think would be appropriate. So I think it would be appropriate as a recount, as like a. Perfect. Yay. Then we'll do that next week. <laughs> I was expecting to do this entire thing at any moment for Hain to show up and be like, hey, look, it's Torg with no arms or legs. You did this, by the way. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. This is your fault, <laughs> stupid. Yep. Tonight's dinner will be sushi. Uh, yeah. I'll admit, your roles determined the fate of Torg, not what your actions were that day. So given our roles, <laughs> uh, what was the fate of Toreg? You'll figure out next week. Son of a... I blame Sabine if he ends up permanently injured. Well, you kind of already know. Kind Why? of. There's a, reason really? the, there's a reason the orcs are attacking, otherwise they wouldn't. No, know, though, because he, there's two reasons they could attack. A, they got Toreg, or B, they got his corpse. How would they find out? I don't think they would have gotten his corpse because Hain needs him. To okay. have the illusion that he's there as a hostage, but getting wind that he's dead could be a thing. Oh my yeah, god, how? he's dead! That's why you said survive! Oh no! Context clues of the what? things you say! He's dead, isn't he? No, no. That's why you that. said survive the raid! Oh no! I think he said that is because the keep is going to get bombed to shit. Objective. <gasps> Survive. But but if, if Torg was alive, he would tell them not to kill us. <gasps> <laughs> so there's two things. Thank you guys for playing with me. <laughs> and thank you, chat, for coming out and supporting uh, the players and myself. You make this a very enjoyable experience. <laughs> This session was lovely. It really was great. What do you guys think of the sort of difference in music? I know we went back to the Domino soundtrack, but I also introduced things like Payday, uh, the Fury OST, stuff like that. I liked it. Yeah, it's good. Yep. It the was score good. was great. Cool. Good, very good, very good. I would like to give an honorary inspiration point that doesn't actually come as an inspiration point. Uh, for the fight, all the fighting today. Oh. The, the whole team gets it. It's, it's it doesn't. It's like whose line is it anyway? They don't matter, but they're there. <laughs> well, how about this? Good job, guys. <laughs> how about this, Silvero? Nice. High or low? Hi. Ohio. Ohio, go inspirationals. Alex trying to speak Elvish. No, Elvino. <laughs> some of you. Elvino. <laughs> some of you did not get to participate. However, the Gamba is in your success. <gasps> All of you can go ahead and mark an inspiration on your character sheet. Damn, how do I mark, oh. how do I mark two inspirations? <laughs> uh, you lose the other one. <laughs> no. Wasted. Look what you made me do. Jimmy. You didn't fight, so you wouldn't get one anyway. I fought. That's not what he said. No, I said even even those that didn't fight because of Silaro's gamble. Unless you want to oh. ensure that Marana and Yuria don't get inspiration. I was just, I Woo. thought that's what you said. No, no, I no. mean, Yuria at least did something today. I have a suspicion that your performance coming up is going to be pretty vital, however. This is, I see lots of lockpicking and backstabbing coming, aren't we? 
That's more Morana, right? That's what I'm saying. Oh, I thought you said jerk. Oh, yeah, I was confused. Oh, I, I don't imagine. <laughs> maybe. I don't imagine Nuria has could. proficiency in, in like, no, no. non politics skills. <laughs> Coming yeah. coming up, I suspect that Morana is going to be doing a lot of skill monkeying, and it's going to be very important. Uh, well, we'll see how my dice feel about that. <laughs> I feel that, though. I'm In my soul! The good uh, news is we have six inspirations to burn on you otherwise. Indeed. Oh, of God, open the door! Think of it as... <laughs> <I'm> all six <laughs> burned! Oh, God! I don't want to God, but bees! <laughs> Just have her pick the lock. This door is made of pure evil! <laughs> the water it's a thing of evil and stupid. Spend half the adventure. Doors violently the rattling. The first two hours of the session are the party ah! trying to escape their cells. Son of a bitch! Chew the lock. <laughs> Lick it. Use her teeth. Something. Do something. Yeah. We're dying in here. <laughs> Rana finally through. has to break down and be like, fine! And she's like, uses her damn her damn pure strength, and she's like, <laughs> so lifts the shit off of its oh hinges. <laughs> Dude, that would be so fucking hilarious. Ten, ten sessions of build up, this, uh, uh, like, figuring out how the world's working, the <laughs> politics, everything like that, working against Lord Hain, only to die in your fucking cells because you can't escape. <laughs> you can't roll over a five. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but that's how that's how those parties go, right? That's how D and D works. <laughs> how Not about the dragon that gets you? It's the twenty six cobalts that are shanking you. He's <laughs> <laughs> really two points, two points, two points, two points. Two points. <laughs> pack tactics, pack tactics. They, <laughs> they all get flanked. Ah, it hurts. What's happening? Why I love I love kobolds as like enemies, but playing a kobold is so hard. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't get a bunch of little kobold buddies, you just get party members. <laughs> party members who are like, oh, a kobold, you <laughs> throw it. Hey, wait a minute. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. I like I played a kobold. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Not everybody's that way, but I imagine most people being paired up with a kobold would be like, all right, where's the rest of my party member, though? Why do I have one fourth <laughs> of a party member? Ooh, oh, somebody, I'm a kobold. <laughs> yeah, I know what you are. Where's the I'm rest of you? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I'm a kobold. You're missing a vital part of yourself, like the rest of you. <laughs> Four feet. <laughs> the rest of you. Fuck off. <laughs> You just say, you just say that because you're short in real life. <laughs> uh, I, thought we, short. I do believe we will be playing uh, the Secrets of Earth on time this Sunday. Nice. Woo! The party heading into the Vampire's Lair. Oh shit! I forgot about that. This yeah. dinner Ending time. Death. Oh. oh God. If you guys have any questions for the party that wishes to remain, uh, go ahead and use your channel points that you may have gotten from the uh, the gamble that happened during the combat. I didn't hey, win. I won that pog. I didn't fucking win! Damn it, Sir. Uh, let me down. The game will take place for the Secrets of Eurist probably around seven a.m. PST. That's generally when we start playing. Seven p.m. A.M. 7 no, a.m. PST. Oh, oh PST. It's <laughs> like CST, bitch. I get up. <laughs> no. no. What the fuck do you mean I let you down? Like, my character lost, went in there bro. with the right attitude. I lost all my boss. I lost it all, brother. He bet against oh. you in the gamble. You're like an idiot. Dude, yeah. I bet against me too. And I lost too, bro. What are you hey. talking about? <laughs> Dumbasses, <laughs> the both of you. Yeah. Fools. I believe Alaric and Kellen both got to like two hit points. Four, but yeah, it's <laughs> close enough. One more hit from from a monster like Torag, and I'd be fucking. The fucking I Pokemon sound. <laughs> yeah, it was it was at that moment that I realized like, wow, this guy is like probably level eight or some shit. <laughs> no, no, not level eight. What but he is a he is a beefy barbarian. Yeah, it was hell. It was uh, a beefy barbarian. 
Oh, was, say that. Indeed. <laughs> I had yeah. K on the line. I was resolved to win even if I lost. Boy, did you win it. You fucking fatality that hell. Uh, yeah, I sir, I sure had a massive victory over Torre, guys. Bet no one God, saw that. Coming. I was just thinking the entire time of like Andre the Giant in the Princess Bride <laughs> choked out. I want you to, I want you to make Torre. sure you're having fun. <laughs> yeah, Caleb is just playing with me, just like when you me. ask me to describe how he used the inspiration to kill the prisoner. Like five people filtered into the room and started talking to me. I know, I heard, but um. Yeah, it was. Oh my god! You know when you have like this big inspiration to start talking because you know exactly what to say, but you can't say it in front of others because it'd be weird. Describe the murder loudly, <laughs> yeah. quickly. Explain how you just obliterate this man's how skull into paste with your fists. What sections did you separate from the rest of his body? Please inform. Speak into yeah. the mic. Vivid detail. Listen, just speak into this, into the collar of my shirt. The FBI is not listening, I swear. <laughs> you do, you what? completely murder this man on Minecraft. This is this the point where we summon the Hydra I told you about, or the Kraken? They're waiting to know what their appointment is. Yeah, go ahead and set them up for a two o'clock. Uh, nice. We'll get them figured out, no problem. That's in 15 minutes. Uh, what is your character's, for the party, what is your character's favorite smell and why? The fuck that is an oddly specific question. Damn. I, hold on. Now I, I bet I wrote this down somewhere. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that's very kind of you, Tetsuya. Thank you for coming out and watching. I very much appreciate it. And it's always good seeing your name. I'm sorry. I didn't write it down. I'm a failure of character creation. All my characters are frauds. I didn't think of what they like to smell. I'm going to go with... Um, I'll get back to you. <laughs> It'll come to me eventually, I swear. Silverill's favorite smell is fresh leather. Mm. Oh, Jacob. <laughs> oh, buddy, oh, friend of mine. Uh, that's all I was doing yesterday was making monsters. Stop it. A lot is the answer. A lot. <laughs> oh, so you're bring, actually bringing out that Hydra or Kraken or whatever? Nobody else answered the smell question. Uh, uh, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, oh. I'm put on the spot here. I'm like, uh. <laughs> Sabine's would be roses. On brand. Looks at icon. Yeah, that checks out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say Yuria enjoys the faint smell of gunpowder. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and I will not explain why. Ah. Uh. Oh, Auntie. <laughs> I guess that's kind of in the same vein as people who, you know, like like the smell of gasoline or something like that. Hmm. It is a smell He's linked psychopath. to safety. I think Alaric prefers the smell of a hairy woman's armpit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not oh, gross. No, nope. uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, you are a good man. You're dead to me. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Yeah. I'm kidding. It's a joke. Why? Are you, are you, that's relax. clipped, you dumb bitch. <laughs> Clip it. Yeah. It's that's on the fine. internet. I'm clipping it now. It'll be held against yeah, you for the rest of your life. Um, I don't mind. I can't wait. It's Anytime fine. we go to a brothel, Alaric's just going to get um, like a waitress with the dwarf, the face. dwarfiest. Yeah. When, when it comes, yeah. when it comes to armpit rank, I have some allies out there. All right, when they will not be alone in this armpit. fight. That's just <laughs> what is happening. <laughs> they know me. Hey, Marana, what's me. your favorite smell? Yeah, yeah, move along. <laughs> I was still thinking about it. I was like, shit. Is um, it blood? 
but probably <laughs> no. I'd say fresh fay. <laughs> She's just probably, thinking about food. Probably just because of where like Malgrove is, the smell of rain. Ooh. That, yeah, it would rain a lot. Petricor. Oh, Petricor, yeah. Yeah, given proximity to Grimwald, which has uh, overcast and rain a lot. So Yeah, probably like the rain on pines, Ooh. that kind of smell. That's a good one. Do they make that in man scent? <laughs> yes, actually. I think there's a candle. <laughs> there's a candle for that. What is yeah. my favorite smell? Yeah, DM. What it's is It's super <laughs> basic. It's real basic. I like the smell of vanilla. Write that down. Write that down. If I could, somebody get that boy a pumpkin spice latte. No, no, no. If I could wear (laughs) vanilla as like a cologne, I would. Oh, my dog is eating something. He shouldn't be. I'll be right back. Is it vanilla? (laughs) Oh my god! What is, what is Illuminar's favorite smell? What is God's favorite smell? (laughs) (laughs) Creation. A (laughs) Yormanir. What's his favorite yeah. spell? Yeah, what's his favorite uh, spell? Is it also vanilla? It's Would that uh, mean Malor Manier's favorite smell is chocolate. It is uh that moment when a star collapses. Uh, yes, I understand. <laughs> Relatable. Mmm, solar dust. <laughs> it's be- things beyond our comprehension. Delightful. So, the aroma, I'll get that in a Yankee can. Uh, a little <laughs> clarification on vanilla. Are you talking like pure vanilla or like candle vanilla? Because they kind of smell a little different. Like a very sort of soft, not like intense. Like if you were to like walk up to me, you would be like, oh, this guy smells uh, like a bakery. Nice. Gotcha. That's what I, I want to smell like that. But like. <laughs> Most of the uh, things that I've looked at have been way too strong. Like, that shit reeks. What about things lightly laced with vanilla, like pancakes? Oh, absolutely. Gentlemen? gentlemen. No, I'm serious. You do put a little bit of vanilla on pancakes. I think we're getting behind on questions. Ooh. Let's see. Uh, My favorite. What is the party's current thoughts upon hearing the cannon fire in the middle of the night? Joy, fear, anxiety. Here we go. The time is now. Time to fuck some shit up. <sighs> I feel, well, Yuria feels really smug because it means her plan mostly worked. Her plan? Smile. Say that again. Smile. <laughs> I Smile. would take her credit plan. for all of this. Smile. <laughs> It comes out. Yes, it was all me and me alone. Just uh, me. I wouldn't even say that it worked. Who knows uh, what the fuck Caleb passes? It mostly worked. <laughs> but they did try to make it work for nine fucking episodes. <laughs> I will say, if you succeed, if you escape. Because ultimately it comes down to dice. If you succeed, you picked one of the hardest options. Well, I mean, the alternative was wait until um, uh, the Arcanist, like, <laughs> Archmage showed up. So, yeah. There Even were then, that was like several two, more than that. There were like three weeks out, and Tain only gave us three days to decide on this shit, so... <laughs> Well, you know what? As a Dark Souls player, I take pride in that. <laughs> Picking the hardest option? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You do realize that the hardest one would have been something like Fear Not the Reaper from Cyberpunk? <laughs> <laughs> like, we all basically get weapons that need to all burn right. everybody in his uh, keep. Genocide run. Up. Let's go. <laughs> no help, no friends. Oh, I guess that's fair. Not even fucking Johnny I, I guess, I guess you picked the second hardest <laughs> one, because the, the first hardest one would have been solo... Like, no allies, because you've alienated everybody. Hain wants nothing to do with you. Uh, 
the mouth of the Iron Duke wants nothing to do with you. Like the Arcanist, Torog, all of them have turned their back on you. Even Creighton doesn't want to do anything with you. So like it's you six having to force your way out of hang keep. That have probably been the hardest. This one that you picked is the second hardest because it all came down to dice rolls. Oh, so we've passed the hard part is what you're saying. The hardest part. No, <laughs> not even close. <laughs> the hardest part uh, is surviving. I don't know. I thought we got to find our gear. Good. We've got like allies, potential allies. And we've got like the Sahagana and the orcs. I got a knife. Terrible. I'm ready listen, to listen, listen, listen. Wake the fuck up, Ranger. We have our keep to burn. <laughs> the first thing we need to do is get these fucking manacles off. Sure. Agreed. Did Siliril know Torug personally before the campaign? Um, I don't know. Do you even think so? He's a seafaring orc. Comes from an island in the south of the Etonmore. She'd have probably known of his tribe, but that's about it. Not one wouldn't have known him personally. Unless he, yeah, unless he frequented like, uh, you know, different ports as as when she was a child, maybe. But no, I don't think they would have ever come across each other. <laughs> How does the party feel about the? Ever so euphoric Lord Haynes missing his fedora. You skipped the question. Oh, what is crown cost? <laughs> we already answered Christ. that. We went into vast detail. Three point summary about uh, DM smell of vanilla. Yeah, I like vanilla. The crown ghost likes. Uh, it's in my notes. I don't know. Probably likes uh, like honey. The smell of honey. Smell of plot and going AFK. Mm -mm. <laughs> Disconnect plus no foundry plus L. <laughs> By the way, earlier today, somebody pointed out that my HP was wrong. And it was. Because I had removed the point of constitution on foundry, but I hadn't moved it on beyond. And when I leveled up and I ported the sheet, it brought along with 18 constitution. So I had to lower two HP points. So you're at 26? Yeah. Mm. Duly noted. Otherwise, I would have had a little bit more HP in that fight. But I changed it when they pointed it out. <laughs> I don't think I've portrayed... <laughs> I don't think I've portrayed... Lord Hain is uh, the neckbeard type, but I could be wrong. He's not. He's I never himself. read him that way. <laughs> the I whole, don't even think he's bad. What the, do you mean? The fedora thing, I was like, uh. <laughs> He's a little sexist. Does oh, it that... mean that he's an incel? What? <laughs> yeah, where's his wife? What the fuck's going on? Where's Miss Hain? Hey, Why no wife, bro? You're an old person with dwindling options. Maybe Where's the wife? Maybe he likes men. Maybe that's why he fills his fucking thing with men. Where, where's the husband? The fuck? What's going on? Not everybody has to get married. So when you say survivor, we're talking like the halo. This will be the last question because uh, it's pretty late. Uh, so when you say survivor, are you talking like the halo reach survive? Yes. Ugh. I'm just going with the fedora question. I'm not making any statements. Thank you guys so much for playing with me. I really enjoy getting to play D&D &D with you guys every week. And thank you, chat, for coming out and supporting them and making this whole experience incredibly enjoyable. If you guys would like, you can go ahead and say goodbye to Chant as I get ready to sign off. Bye, Chat. Goodbye, Chat. You're Good cool. <laughs> Boy. See if as I know I left you hanging, I'll tell you more about the sweat thing later. Ew. Goodbye, Chat. Bye, Chat. Thank you, guys. You have made tonight's, the entire evening, incredibly enjoyable. I love looking over during the session and reading chat 
it is so much fun. You guys are a great time. So thank you guys for coming out and supporting myself and the players. I know I say that every time, but I mean it. Uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. We will be picking up next week for episode 10 on the 25th of February. God, this month is flying by. 25th of February for episode 10, The Siege of Hain Keep. And we will also be playing this Sunday over on Momo's channel for the Secrets of Eerest. I believe it's episode 21. I might be wrong. There's so many episodes. But we will be playing on the 20th this Sunday. So be sure to stop on by. Once again, thank you guys so much. I'm going to go make some food because I'm starving. And I didn't eat before stream like a smart guy. So thank you guys. I greatly appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much, uh, Toby, Doppelganger, uh, Guido, uh, Doxter, Zero, Prostar, Octon, Striker. Thank you guys for your uh, resubs. That means a lot. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy your night. I hope you take care. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Rest well.